It's time for more history shit. This is good stuff here. 30 crazy facts that will change your will view of change history. Absolutely change your view of history. <coughs> <coughs> this is American, American History K, dude. This is called, yeah, this is a section called American History K. Well, this was assembled by Kaiser. I will say that is not an accurate title because I think TJ put that title on there. This is like World History, history of the World Part 1 is what I called it. All right. So oh, that's wow. What, that's so this is a bullshit. way more ostentatious title than we had come up with. History of the I world. Know had a diff- so we're we, oh man, I gotta pay attention. We gotta focus, TJ. It, will there be a test at the end of this one, Kaiser Scotty? You never know, Paul. Oh shit! You never know. I hate when teachers do that shit. Damn, dude. They won't tell you if they're gonna test you. Red, get quiz. ready to have your opinion of America blown to smithereens, bitch. All right. I guess the world. I have a pretty high opinion of America, so I'm ready. Paul Revere never shouted, the British are coming. Yeah, I actually knew this. Motherfucker lied. During Paul Revere's famous ride, the Patriot shouted, the British are coming at the top of his lungs to warn the colonial military, or sorry, militia, (laughs) of the approaching enemy. But historians agree that such shouting would have been dangerous and foolish. Cool. So he didn't do it. Didn't fucking do it. It's a fucking lie. Just another the one British of, are just coming. Another the fable. British are coming. Marie Antoinette never said, let them eat cake. Oh, shit. I didn't know this one, man. This destroys That was my, my favorite quote of hers, too. Yeah, dude. I always imagined her, like, you know, sitting surrounded by opulence. You know, like, just food, as far as the eye can see. And her, her subjects are all starving in the streets. And she always says it with that hoity-toity voice, too. Oh, let them eat Cake. Oh, I mean, I understand that the, the sentiments at the time in France were not very good for the nobility. So this was just kind of like this is how this is basically a way of saying this is how out of touch she is, and the royal the royals are, and the noble ability are with the but struggle of the. Apparently, it's all lies, like everything else we've been told. And yeah, in, in the version much. of this quote originally came from the autobiography of. I Jean think they Jacques teach you Rousseau. a false history just so they can shock you, and it's like that actually didn't happen. You're like, whoa! Who mentioned Mind a princess blown. saying it? And which would be attributed to Antoinette. So basically... So it's bullshit. Somebody else said it. Yeah, she got blamed for it. That's about it. The current U.S. flag was designed by a 17-year-old. Wow. That would be Robert G. Heft. Heft. Ooh. Who created the design in 1958. I like that name, Heft. Heft. Hefty. wonder if he's a big dude. Yeah, he's huge, dude. He's fucking huge. Can't have a name like. I mean, he didn't really have a lot. I mean, like he, the the basic outline of what the flag was was already there. He just had to add some more stars to it. I added some stars. I did a good job. I drew lines and some stars. Good little Robbie Heft. We'll send this to the government. I bet they'll choose it. Many of history's biggest disasters are caused by lack of sleep. Well, we better fucking responsibly end this show Uh-oh. then. Oh, shit, dude. Dude, what big disaster could we possibly cause by doing this show? What if we spill oil somewhere or what? Or explode what oil? A what access ship? to enough oil to cause a disaster do we have? My face, dude. It's pretty oily. The Challenger explosion, Valdez bullshit, the Exxon Chernobyl Valdez. nuclear mill, all of oh, them. Oh, shit. Were caused by a lack of sleep and exhaustion, man. On the part of the men yeah, who were responsible. What are we in charge of here that could go awry? We're man. in charge of the world's greatest, greatest podcast of all time. Yeah, greatest but. Greatest podcast but TJ, ever. But TJ, we were born to do this. We can't fuck it up. Born to make podcasts. Also, 40 tips for better sleep on summer nights. Woo. Open a window and have a cool breeze roll in. Nixon was a brilliant musician. Whoa. What? How do you I know? I knew he could play the piano. I'm actually talented. The man could play five instruments. Whoa. Piano, saxophone, clarinet, accordion, clarinet. and violin. Step aside, fucking Bill Clinton. Thought he, he was cool because he could play the so sax. so frequently. Kind so could Tricky sax. Dick. Slick Willie could play the sax, but so could Tricky Dick and four other instruments, by the way. Uh, he played a piano rendition of Happy Birthday at the White House for Duke Ellington and My Wild Irish Rose in honor of his wife at Nashville's Grand Ole Opry. 
Uh, for more on his darker nature, however, see the 30... I mean, quit trying to promote your other lists, bitch. Oh, they always do that, dude. Fuck this site and its lists within lists bullshit. I mean, does the fact that he could play five instruments automatically make him a brilliant musician? Suck it, too. I, I mean, guess me? that's pretty goddamn brilliant. I guess it kind of does. Abe Lincoln was a wrestling champ. Yeah, well, let's see him choke slam The Undertaker then, huh? Dude, maybe he could have. You think he could have uh, thrown mankind off of the fucking Hell in Dude. a Cell in 1998 if he was alive then? What I if, think so. What if Vince McMahon, in a fit of brilliant, latent homosexuality-fueled fervor and Vince time travel and rips Honest Abe out of the past and forces him into slavery as a wrestler for him? And the only way to win is freedom. Yeah, so it's like the inversion. Again, he has to deal with slavery, but this time he's on the other end of it. Dude, I see this movie happening. Dude, his fucking finishing move has to be called the Emancipation Proclamation. Oh, yeah, dude. Or the Emancipator. Yeah, dude, the Emancipator! Oh, my God, it's the Emancipator! It's the Emancipator! He's locked it in! It's got to be a fucking... You know what? It's got to be a submission, too, because you got to make somebody submit like he made the South tap, dude. Yeah. Man, this is a great movie. Oh, how much more his neck can take? Let's make Abe Lincoln wrestler. And he only lost once, too. Hitler, Mussolini, and Stalin were all nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. Wow. That doesn't detract from the credibility of that at all. No. I mean, can I can we can I ask you guys a question? Yeah. You guys ask ever away. given a fuck about the goddamn Nobel Peace Prize? No. No. Who gives a shit, right? I mean, I whatever. I guess it's a nice thing to give people who... But, like, when is it... Like, especially the, since Obama got it, it's like, isn't that the death knell of that prize? Oh, it was, totally. I mean, the man was, like, actively dropping bombs on multiple countries at the time that they put that medal Here's around. Here's your peace tonight. prize. Here's your peace prize. Thanks for bringing peace in the form of death and destruction and maiming. Good stuff. Fuck the Nobel Committee and fuck their prize. They should have pinned it on Hitler and Mussolini. Uh, Audubon killed lots of birds. And actually, our, the, the zoo around here is actually well, the one in New Orleans is named for this guy, too. John James Audubon's pioneering paintings of birds are so stunning that many overlook the fact to get such great detail, the artist would often kill his subjects, posing freshly killed birds into active poses so he could create a realistic painting without worrying they would fly away. Wow. Well, that's one way to do it, I guess. I mean, whatever. It's not like, you know... If it was an endangered bird, he was doing that, too. If he was killing a bald eagle to pose it, I'd have a problem, but... Bird killer! I mean, whatever. What a piece of shit. <laughs> One bird life is worth a painting. The Pope once declared war on cats. Really? Uh, Pope Gregory the Fourth must have been a real dog person. The 13th century Pope stated that black cats were instruments of Satan in order they be exterminated throughout Europe. His followers uh, followed his orders and decimated the population of felines. But cats may have gotten the last laugh as the reduction in their population is among the factors that led to a spike in the population of plague-carrying rats. Well, we already know that's bullshit from doing our own research on the Black Plague. Thank you. Women were once made to wear muzzles. Good. You know, we need to bring that once? one back. Yeah. Bring it fucking back, Man. dude. Bringing muzzles back. What's dude. old is new again. It's time, you know, like a lot of fucking trends, you know, they, is it they really go away possible? for a while. Is it possible that the ancient people just knew what we are now figuring out? That when you leave the muzzle off the women for too long, shit starts to go to hell, dude. You We're just now it. start. Dude, they got to get the, we got to muzzle them again. They've hey, said muzzle them. That's how that's where that comes from. Dude. Oh. Hashtag they've said enough. They've said enough. Hashtag no more. <laughs> a scold's bridle. I like that. A scold's bridle. A metal muzzle that would lock around her head and sometimes include a, sp a spike plate. I mean, that makes sense to me. Mouth. The yeah. Iron Maiden was never really a thing. Yeah, we figured that out already. We already know that. We're way ahead of you, List. <laughs> it wasn't like never really a thing. It was just very rare. Space travel was proposed in the 17th century. Well, it was a long time after that that they fucking did it. I mean, it might have been proposed earlier than that. Um, turns out English theologian John Wilkins was kicking the idea around in the 1600s. In his book, he suggested that flying chariots could take men to the moon, which he believed were inhabited by other beings 
that could prove to be great trade partners. <laughs> So not ex- I mean like that's not exactly an exercise in like scientific rationalism or something. Right. And this shit. is just the first dude to write that down. He was hardly the first dude that was like, I wanna I, we could go up there. Go up on the moon. Trade us some fucking let's trade with the moon men. We'll trade with we're, we're asking for some cheese. The moonanites. Pilgrims never wore buckles on their well, my view of history is shattered by that. Oh my god! Never I knew wore this buckles shit. on their hats, huh? Holy fucking shit! I knew this shit. I knew that shit when I was a kid. Cleopatra those... was not Egyptian. Yeah, what? She, she was from the Ptolemy family, oh. which goes back to Alexander. As best Whatever. as history could tell, she was actually Greek, a descendant of Alexander the Great's Macedonian general Ptolemy. Yeah. She were Egyptian. More than That's 600 hard. plots on Fidel Castro's oh, life were made. Ones do, like, many of which were absolutely absurd. Oh, God, yeah, they were. Like, some of the CIA plots to kill Fidel Castro will take away all faith that our country yeah, can do. exploding cigar, a poison diving suit, psychedelic drugs to make him sound crazy when speaking in public. Dude, the, my favorite one was they're like, all right, he likes to go diving around here. Here's what we're going to do. We'll put a particularly interesting looking shell at the bottom of the fucking, you know, ocean right here. And when he when it'll naturally attract his eye and he'll go pick it up and when he does, it'll explode and it'll kill him. Wow. I mean like that didn't work. That was no. so fucking they, convoluted. They, they, they poisoned us like some milkshake he was gonna drink, but then it melted and he's like, I don't wanna drink this one, make me a new one. It was just like a nap bumbling An shit, An exploding dude. cigar, a poisoned diving suit, and psychedelic you know drugs what? I, to make I, him I, sound I think, crazy when speaking Corky in Romano public. I to fucking kill Fidel Castro. You guys want some cookies? There was someone named Mary, and she had a little lamb. Well, yeah, I mean, I assume... Oh, shit. No, statistically, an, you know... No, I mean, like, the, but they're saying that, like, that's actually based sure, on yeah, the Sure, yeah, the basis of the shit. Oh, Mary wasn't. Sawyer, an 11-year-old girl in Boston who was followed to school one day in 1817 by her pet lamb. In the uh, late 1860s, she helped raise money for an old church by selling pieces of wool made from the famous lamb. Cool. Wow. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb. Joan of Arc was a fashion icon. Joan of Arc has become, to, become a hero in France and canonized as a saint. But few know she was also a style goddess. Years after she cut her hair short, a decision prompted by the voices in her head, she became a style icon uh, when she became the inspiration for the famous Bob haircut. Who knew? Damn. All right, All right. so Joan of Arc was the first chick to have a short haircut yep. in history. She popularized <laughs> it, dude. Oh. There you go. All right. Escalators used to be terrifying. When did they stop? They're still terrifying. Yeah, they're still pretty fucking scary. I've dude. seen a lot of people get killed oh, by dude, escalators, have, like, and it's not good. On You've those? seen it? Oh, yeah. In person? No, not in person. Oh, oh dude, those videos online, they were crazy. People get just stuck go in to, those machines. Just go to fucking watch people die on Reddit, type escalator in the search. No, and wow. dude, no, man. You'll oh, see dude, some picture, shit. And the picture when they stop and the insides, dude, are just crazy. You'll people. see some shit you cannot dude, unsee. It fucking, it's a meat grinder, let's put it that way. While escalators seem pretty innocuous today, people used to be really frightened of them. When first, inter- yeah, I'm already, I'm still frightened of them. Fuck that. No, dude, no, read that, dude. I want to read. All right, all right, go ahead, you read it. Uh, when introducing them on the London Underground, executives for the escalators manufacturer Molum and Cochrane tapped the services of a one-legged man named William Harris to demonstrate how safe it was, riding up and down to show that those that took it were unlikely to lose their balance. So people were afraid they were just going to fall or something. Here's a one-legged man. He can ride it, so can you. (laughs) If he can do it, you can do it. Shopping carts were also unpopular. Why? Though we can't imagine life today without them now, shopping carts did not catch on right away. When their inventor, Sylvan Goldman, who owned the Humpty Dumpty chain of grocery stores in the South, first rolled out his new invention, nobody wanted to use them. He had to hire decoy shoppers to wheel them around his stores to demonstrate their convenience. They caught on soon after that. Sometimes you just got to pay someone to demonstrate to your the product f- to other people. Well, you know what it was? Yeah. Like, they probably don't want to look dumb. Because, I mean, you kind of do, do feel dumb sometimes. You're pushing a shopping cart along. But they're so useful. It's everybody like, else has them, too. So it's just like a, Yeah, so it's like, that's probably what it was. Like, I'm not going to be that fucking guy. I ain't going to be the dude pushing that goofy-looking fucking thing around. 
So, yeah, they just hire people to, like, walk around comfortably with the carts. Yes, yes. I use this to... I am shopping now. ...accumulate my smart. purchases into one convenient-to-move thing. I mean, it ended, oh, ended oh, up being a big-ass fucking invention. What a boon it is to grocery stores, because, I mean, people before had to carry all their shit, and yeah, now they can sucked. push it. I, I mean, had baskets, probably, you know? Well, that limits how much you're going to buy, too. I mean, in the real like, old days, you should just go to the store clerk with, like, a list that you handed them, and they just went and got all the shit. Oh, wow, man. Maybe we are... We did get fucked by the basket. The Titanic's owner owners never said it was unsinkable. Come on, that's... You know, that's just too much fun, though. A key detail in the telling of the story of the Titanic is the hubris of the ship's owners who claimed it could not be sunk. Can't sink it. In fact, the White Star Line never actually used that phrase. As historian Richard Howell explains, the population as a whole were unlikely to have thought the Titanic as a uniquely unique unsinkable ship before its maiden voyage. Whatever, dude. Everyone was bragging about how it was unsinkable. Damn, and there's sank. 20 other facts that the movie gets wrong. Well, of course. We wanted to have our entire idea of Titanic blown away someday. Salem witches were never burned at the stake. The popular what? images of the Salem witch trials involved the unfortunate women being burned at the stake. But while these women were horrifyingly treated, that is one cruelty they did not suffer. Of the 20 people who were convicted of being witches, those who were sentenced to death were hung, not burned. Oh, well, that's good. Well, that's... I mean, then why do we even care about it, then? Yeah, who even gives a shit now? Good old humane hanging. I mean, who cares? The first fax machine was patented the year the Oregon Trail began. What? Yeah. We think of fax machines as relatively modern technologies with their heyday in the 1980s, but as Paul Tamburo explains, Scottish inventor Alexander Bain put forward the patent for the first fax machine, then known as the facsimile machine, in 1843, the same year of the Great Migration on the Oregon Isn't Trail that began. Insane, dude. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> it's before the telephone. Women once marched for the right to smoke. Wow, While we're familiar with applause, suffragettes and women's fight for the right to vote, less known is the women's fight for the right to smoke. The same organization that fought for the ban on alcohol pushed to ban women from smoking in public. In 1929, a group of women took to the streets smoking cigarettes and carrying signs stating that cigarettes were torches of liberty. Oh, you know what they leave out of this conveniently, though? What's Those that? women weren't compelled to do that or even, like, inclined to do that on their own. They are actually hired by a man named Edward Bernays, who was the first public relations person that ever worked in the history. He invented it. And they, he was hired. You want to guess who hired him? Hmm. Took a stab Big at... Tobacco. Holy shit. What? You, you know why? Because women... <clears throat> thought it was unfeminine to smoke. They thought it was something that only men should do. So and this so, is yet another example of a company <sighs> hiring someone to demonstrate their product. Uh, yeah. Well, also capitalizing on kind of a popular movement of the time, it's like, you know, women should have the right to vote, and they should have the right to smoke cigarettes if yeah. they want to. He just hitched onto that wagon and hired some women to march through New yeah. York smoking cigarettes. The same God thing, bless The same thing they do with SJWs now. Forks used to be seen as sacrilege. When first introduced in the 11th century, and forks fork alarmed fork. religious leaders who said that using artificial hands was an offense to God. I heard about people in those they days have, calling them the devil's pitchfork, too. They are. Forks are the devil's look. pitchfork. Don't trust a man eating with a fork, TJ. A woman was elected to Congress before women could vote. Jeanette Rankin became the first female member of the U.S. Congress in 1916, four years before women could vote. Cool. Nazis rarely called themselves Nazis. The term Nazi was originated as an insult, meaning ignorant peasant, and was in use long before Adolf Hitler rose to power. As a Telegraph columnist explains, it was a shortened version of Ignatius a common name in Bavaria, the area from which the Nazis emerged. Opponents seized on this and shortened the party's title. Uh, I'm not even going to try to read all that. Um, what is it? Well, look at it. You try to read this it's shit. It's a little small for me over here. Nach National Socialist Deutsch 
Aldebart Partel. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. They just shortened it to Nazi. Okay, Nazi. So that became Nazi. I don't think You're that was even Nazi. necessarily an insult, but that was just... Dude. Like, didn't have to say all the that. The next one's fucking awesome. The Bloody Mary was originally known as uh, Bucket of Blood. Give me a bucket of blood. Bring back the bucket of blood. Hell yeah. I'd, I'd order one. Open a bar that specializes in Bloody Marys, but call them Buckets of Blood. Dude, this Not is the most appetizing name, but the familiar Tomat's vodka and tomato juice thing. beverage originally carried that title when it was introduced at Harry's New York Bar. A patron named Roy Barton coined the name and it stuck until New York City's King Cole Bar at the St. Regis Hotel reintroduced the drink and rebranded it the Red Snapper. And then finally, Bloody Mary. Dude, bucket of blood, awesome. The red snapper, that's pretty awesome. The not red a, snapper, not as good, but bloody mary, I don't know. Red snapper, just sounds like a bitch on her period. You need the red snapper, don't you? The U.S. poisoned people as a drinking deterrent. We actually know this is not true. It is true, Scotty. The site says so. Yeah, there's a couple things these sites get wrong, but no, you always, Scotty, this is correct. You, you tend to run into these things. So next. No, it's true. They didn't poison anybody. Whatever. Wormwood was originally used for medical purposes. Known as the key ingredient in absinthe and often reputed falsely as the reason for its hallucinogenic properties, wormwood actually began as a medicine used by the Egyptians as far back as 1550 BC and used as remedies by the ancient Greeks. Cool. The first submarine attack occurred in 1776. While U-boats are central to 20th century war stories, they first made their appearance during the Revolutionary War. Turtle, built by American David Bushnell in 1775, was the first submersible vessel ever used in combat. It was used to attempt an attack on the British ship Eagle on September 6, 1776, but the plan failed when it proved too tough to navigate against the current. Not an impressive debut of the submarine, but whatever. Did that change your view of history, TJ? Dude, my view of history is fucking devastated. But honestly, altered. honestly, this is the one that did it. Pilgrims never wore buckles. Pilgrims never wore buckles on their hats. I mean, how am I even supposed to live knowing that? Um, it's mainly just a collection of like little things where it's like they got some detail wrong. I don't think it really drastically alters your view of history though. Dude, my view of history is shattered. I don't know what you're talking about. Is it William Shattered? <laughs> I don't even know how to fucking live anymore. I mean, after what I saw, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously, we saw William Shatner's accurate. Alexander the yeah, Great I mean, that was, was probably accurate the most depiction. accurate depiction I've ever Historic seen of accurate. Alexander the Great. But th- now this, I mean, I'm learning so much. And the fact that pilgrims never wore buckles on their hats. You just can't believe it. It just blows my mind like nothing ev- I ever thought like, anything ever could, you know? Like, it just, I mean, how do I even live? How do I even look at the world the same way I don't anymore? Know, dude. You just have to try. That's all you can do. Just try to feel normal. Get out of here with your no, shit. No, thanks. For no, all we your don't pop want. up bullshit. Ten interesting things you didn't know about American history. Maybe I do know them. Fucking stupid sight. One. The founding fathers penned the first couple of drafts of the Declaration of oh, Independence yeah. on hemp paper. Unfortunately, they kept rolling it up and smoking it, you know? Uh, since at the time 75% of all the world's paper was made of cannabis hemp fiber fuck yeah dude the democratic delegates eked out the documents first and second drafts completed on June 28th and July 2nd 1776 respectively on Dutch hemp paper the final document had a more official air though and was printed on parchment gay should have kept it on hemp Keep it on hemp, dude. Hemp is where it's at. Months before World War II culminated in the absolute decimating of Hiroshima, the Japanese found themselves in a bit of a pinch. Making the most of the strong air currents across the Pacific Ocean, the Japanese crafted what was likely the first intercontinental All weapon system yeah. and attached bombs to hydrogen balloons. It's not a, that doesn't create a hydrogen bomb, Japan, just so you know. 
in what was known as the Fugo campaign. Fugo. Fugo. Depending Fugo. on weather conditions, it would take each balloon anywhere from 30 to 60 hours to reach the United States. Researchers estimate that the Japanese said sayonara to around 9,000 bombs that were approximately 33 feet in diameter of the United States, with 342 known to have reached the United States. So not a very Many high of them landed of and exploded, with one even killing a whole family in Oregon in 1944. Rumor has it there may still be dozens potentially still active lying around. So there's just like old Japanese bombs littering the Pacific Northwest. The Liberty Bell is an iconic American revelant, uh, relic. Unfortunately, its tolling hasn't been heard since George Washington's birthday in 1846. The bell, which used to reside in Pennsylvania's Independence Hall, was erected in August 1752 and was first rung July 8, 1776, to celebrate the first public reading of the Declaration of Independence. Though no conclusive evidence exists to determine when the bell first cracked, some argue that liberty split during the Revolutionary War in 1824. Others speculate it happened during the funeral of Chief Justice John Marshall in 1835. It was the cherry tree chopping president's birthday that cracked the bell. I cannot tell a lie. Repair. Yeah, come on. Next. Next, on TJ. You. The Republican and Democratic Party symbols emerged less from political tact and more in jest and retribution. The Democratic Party's donkey symbol was adopted in 1828 when, during an election, Andrew Jackson's opponents called him a jackass. The Republican Party's elephant symbol was adopted in 1874 after satirical cartoonist Thomas Nast drew an elephant labeling it the Republican vote. I don't get the joke, but... Most of the nation's... First ginger president, wait, most know the nation's first ginger president was a Francophile, but they don't know uh, just how much he embraced the life of Thomas Jefferson here. What? So this is talking about Thomas Jefferson here. Here's how much. When President Jefferson would greet White House guests in a robe and slippers. Hell yeah, dude. And while Jefferson didn't adopt the Basso, he did initiate the custom of shaking hands when meeting people as opposed to bowing that had the been Bissot? favored by George Washington. What the fuck is a basso? I don't know. It's like a curtsy or something? It's this hum I'm hearing. You're hearing a hum? Yeah. It's probably just because the volume had to be all the way up. Is oh. that, did that great? Yep. That fixed it. Just turn it down as far as you can. Uh, aside from being the first president of the United States, George Washington was, all the, was also quite the booze hound. Well, of course. Booze hound. He loved the booze. And manufacturer, uh, Washington was a savvy businessman who owned one of the largest distilleries in 18th century America. By 1799 alone, he was producing 11,000 gallons of whiskey. That's pretty impressive, dude. Uh, in 1797, George Washington's farm manager, a Scot named James Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Convinced his employer that producing whiskey made from corn and rye grown on the plantation would be a natural complement to his milling business. Washington erected the 2,250-square-foot uh, distillery, making it among the largest whiskey distilleries in early America. Today, the two-story stone distillery is reconstructed and operates seasonally, mashing, fermenting, and distilling grain as it was done in the 18th century. Cool. Here's an ad for uh, a superb cocktail. By Hilton Worldwide. <laughs> if you want that. Uh, on September 25th, 1820, Salem, New Jersey held a trial against tomatoes. What? What, dude? The general populace believed tomatoes were poisonous, so Robert Johnson stepped in and proved them wrong. To do so, he bravely stood before a crowd at the courthouse and consumed a whole basket of the delectable fruit. N not dying after consumption, the trial was promptly The delectable dismissed. fruit. Senor Tomato. The delectable fruit. Yeah. Beautiful. So beautiful. What time zone is DFF in? It's in central time. Is that the Texas flag? You're damn right it is, TJ. Is it? Uh, yeah, it is. 
1842, the Society for the Protection of German Immigrants in Texas, or whatever the fuck, set its immigration aspirations on the Republic of Texas. The society was first established in Germany with the ultimate end goal being swapping spurs for Lederhosen and cultivating a German state. So... By 1847, over 5,000 German immigrants had established five settlements across the state. A further 2,000 immigrants had arrived by 1853, but the movement failed due to lack of planning, mistrust, and bad business sense. What? Like, wait a minute. Who's responsible for Lederhosen? (laughs) 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 Who is this? So this, I don't know, some fuck a bunch of Germans wanted to start like Germany 2 in Texas. In Texas, dude. Lame. As if Texas wasn't bad enough. So here's a guy here. Well, I don't know. The nation's 30th vice president, Charles Gates Dawes, has the distinction of being not only a banker and politician prior to assuming the role of Calvin Coolidge's VP, but also a hit music composer. He enjoyed playing the piano and composing music and co-wrote the melody in A major or Dawes Melody in 1911. Wow, he wrote Dawes Melody, dude? The Dawes Melody. The one and only. Holy shit. Can't even believe that shit. Songwriter Carl Sigmund added lyrics in 1951, changed the name to It's All in the Game, and Tommy Edwards later performed it, and blah, blah, blah. So he wrote a fucking song. Big fucking deal. Yeah, who cares? Suck my dick. Yeah, this is just the the same 17-year-old fact. That's it. Not many interesting facts about America, I guess. Here's what BuzzFeed thinks are 21 Actually, the things. the Huff Post, TJ. Sorry, Huffington Post. What's the difference? Not much. Okay. 21 very American things you'll be surprised you didn't even fucking so goddamn know. know. Oh, man. I wonder how many of these will surprise me. All right, you tell me what you're surprised by, Paul. Okay, fair enough. You tell me what surprised I'll me. let you know. I'll tell you, TJ. The classic bald eagle screech is actually a red-tailed hawk. Bald eagle screeches are kind of weak. I mean, I guess I didn't know this. Are you surprised? I guess. Yeah, this screech just isn't as good. Abraham Lincoln is in the Wrestling Hall of Fame. Man, you guys really need to get some new facts, guys. Yeah, they fucking love that one, dude. Uncle Sam was real, dude. Uncle Sam was a real person named Samuel Wilson. I knew this. You didn't know shit. Yeah, also the inspiration for the, uh, uh, the, I don't know what's called in Fallout, the smiling kid, whatever boy or whatever it is. Yeah. I knew this shit, dude. The firstborns of the Budweiser family were made to taste the beer before their mother's milk. Hell yeah, I got a bar. Poor kids, dude. What do you mean, poor kids? Budweiser sucks. Whatever. The seventh inning stretch may have accidentally been created by Howard Taft. Damn, dude, Taft did it? So what is the legend? Although this may just be legend, the story goes that President Taft was attending a baseball game and over the course of the game became increasingly uncomfortable in his small wooden chair. I relate to you, Taft. Taft was a very large man and eventually couldn't take being confined to the small space anymore, so in the seventh inning he stood up to stretch his legs. Thinking that the president was about to leave, the rest of the audience also rose to show respect. Taff eventually sat back down, and the audience rejoined him, thus creating the seventh-inning stretch, at least according to lore. So who the fuck knows? I'm I'm shocked. The Mall of America is owned by Canadians? This is shocking. The Manchurian Mall, dude. There goes my desire to ever go there. The Manchurian fucking Mall. The Mall of America, indeed. The Mall of America, eh? It's ba- the fucking company that owns it is based in Edmonton, Canada. What a fucking shithole. Let's burn it to the ground. July 2nd is actually the real American Independence Day. The Second Continental Congress in Philadelphia actually voted to approve a resolution of independence on July 2nd, and later that day, at the Pennsylvania Evening Post published, this day the Continental Congress declared the United Colonies free and independent states. July 4th is when the Congress adopted the official Declaration of Independence, although most people didn't even sign it until around early August. Philadelphia didn't celebrate the Declaration until July 8th. The Continental Army didn't find out until the 9th, and England had no idea until August 30th. Wow. At the time, John Adams even said the 2nd of July, 1776, will be the most memorable time yeah. in the history of America. Well, you were two days off, John Adams. Sorry. You were close. Fuck, the British didn't even know until August 30th. They're like, I got some mail from America. Oh, shit. What the fuck is this? This is bad news. 
John Quincy Adams and Theodore Roosevelt skinny dipped in the Potomac River frequently, but together? That's what I want to know. I guess they didn't live in the same time. No. Although skinny dipping in the Washington, D.C. stretch of the Potomac nowadays would be a bad time. Both presidents, John Quincy Adams and Theodore Roosevelt, loved to do so back in the day. In Roosevelt's own words, if we swam the Potomac, we usually took off our clothes. I don't need to think about that. I don't want to think about this fucking guy up here. Yeah, dude. Going for a dip. Gonna take off my clothes now. Uh, Remove me britches. Strip down to me britches. The Statue of Liberty has Morton's toe. What's that? The fuck is Morton's toe? Like a deformity. Oh, that's when you're... Oh, when you're... Yeah, yeah your when your toe second is toe is longer than your big toe. Yeah. Cool. All right. That's supposed to mean you're the boss of your family when you got that shit. You know? Neat. That's what I hear There's anyway. a desk full of candy on the floor of the U.S. Senate. Ooh. Condor. The candy desk is an ongoing tradition started in 1968 by California Senator George Murphy, who would keep his desk full of candy despite a no-eating rule on the floor. Since then, the tradition has been continued. Currently is held by uh, Illinois Senator Mark Kirk. Whoa. Good last name. Oh, shit. Total retard, though. Any relation there? Probably. Huh? Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Who fills no the relation? desk with Illinois candy like Mars bars, jelly beans, and Wrigley gum. Or jelly belly. Those are jelly beans, though. Harry Truman's middle name is Just S. Whoa. I guess I always assumed it stood for something. Truman's parents couldn't decide on a middle name, so they just, yeah, S. Your S. Your middle name is S. Middle names are bullshit anyway. I'll take Truman. For Make 500. mine Truman. When the fuck do you use your middle name? Call me James from now on. Name is Kirk. James Kirk. Captain of the Enterprise. The Pledge of Allegiance was created by advertisers, and the inclusion of Under God is a product of the Red Scare. Okay. I always heard it was written by a fucking socialist, so... Was it a socialist advertiser? Or is one of those wrong? The Youth's Companion was a magazine that also supplied American flags to schools uh, across... So basically, they wanted to sell you the flag, so that they had to sell you the pledge to sell you the flag, so they could make money on the flag. God bless capitalism. On September 8th, 1892, they published the pledge, written by an employee of the magazine, to promote nationalism and presumably sell more flags and subscriptions. The pledge ended up taking off across the country, but over the years has undergone a few changes. Originally, the pledge involved a salute modeled after the classic Roman one, which Mussolini and Hitler ended up adopting as well. So you used to seek high all the flag, yeah, you basically. Did, you're like, Obviously, the salute was I dropped. I pledge allegiance. Also, of the United States of America was added to make it clear to immigrants they were pledging to the U.S. Under God was added during the Red Scare. You gotta make sure that they know the United States of America. So they used to just say, I pledge allegiance to the flag. They didn't say of the United States of America. That was added to help stupid immigrants realize what they were even pledging to. Did You, you know what, you start doing the... You, if, next, if you ever have to say the pledge again, make sure you put your hand all the way out in the fucking Roman salute. People are like, what are you doing? Is that a Nazi salute? Like, no, it's actually a Roman this salute. This is the traditional salute for the Pledge of Allegiance? Uh, inspired by the Roman Empire. Thank you. Sieg allegiance. Sieg allegiance to the flag. Flags and of the twelve people who walked on the moon, eleven were. I'm oh, sorry, I'm, that was. Yeah, of the twelve people who walked on the moon, eleven were Boy Scouts. Damn, dude. Well, I missed my opportunity, man. I what was are you, never some a kind of fucking Boy, Boy Scout? Scout? Yeah, actually, I am. Uh, Don't try to be a Boy Scout, kid. You'll get hurt. The state of Ohio was accidentally not admitted into the Union until 1953. <clears throat> uh, uh, Ohio likes to think it was an accident. Yeah. It was intentional. Yeah. Um, it wasn't until 1953 that Ohio Congressman George H. Bender brought a bill to the U.S. Congress asking them to retroactively admit his state in the United States of America. Thomas Jefferson had approved the territory more than a century before during his tenure as president, but due to an accidental oversight, the state had never been formally admitted. Congress approved Bender's bill, and now the official day Ohio became a state is March 1st, 1803, even if that isn't exactly true. So they try to retroactively eh, fix their quote-unquote mistake. 
Ellis Island actually didn't force any immigrants to Americanize their names. Really? The popular story goes that many foreign-sounding last names, often Jewish or Irish, were changed by immigration officers at Ellis Island to be more American and easier to pronounce in their new homes. This is just a myth. Uh, These officers were often immigrants themselves and had no such instructions to offer suggestions for name changes. Nobody has been able to find concrete evidence of a single name being forcefully changed at Ellis Island. This myth comes from the fact that many immigrants actually willingly changed their names before boarding their respective ships to America, uh, where they'd have to fill out a name in the ship's log. The only known change to officially occur at Ellis Island was actually big news back in the day. Frank Woodhull was born a woman named Mary Johnson, but decided to make a new life uh, for himself in America as a man, so he signed his ship log with his new name. Ellis Island allowed Frank to successfully come into the nation with his new life. Wow. Wow, dude. Tran- Fucking trans, trans people person. of history, dude. Well, not to mention that. I mean, so it's... Great! So Trannies actually, of history! So a lot of people actually just willingly changed their name, or they just were probably misunderstood. The average NFL game has just 10 minutes and 43 seconds of televised gameplay. I have no trouble believing that. No, that's not hard to believe at all. Dude, I thought it would be less, honestly. That's why I stopped watching most football. I'm just so sick of the constant commercial bullshit. The Wall Street Journal has found the actual amount. Well, we, I mean, it's pretty self Constant com- commentary and all the time it takes to set up between plays and review plays and shit. Just becomes like a, it feels like a really slow game. Uh, Captain America is a first-generation Irish immigrant. Steve Rogers, born July 4th, 1920, which is noted above probably shouldn't have been our Independence Day, to Irish immigrants Sarah and Joseph Rogers. He had an Irish Catholic upbringing. According to 2010 census data, 11.2% of the U.S. has Irish heritage. A bunch of damn drunk losers. Uh, including you, TJ. The soil under a George... I don't have no fucking Irish in me. How dare you? The soil under a George Washington statue in England was shipped from the U.S. in order to fulfill the president's vow never to stand on English soil after the American Revolution. What? Huh? Hold on. Let me nice, uh? dude. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Let me play that right. Uh? The soil under a George Washington statue in England was shipped from the U.S. in order to fulfill the president's dude, vow never to soil, stand dude. on English soil Fuck after yeah, the American dude. Revolution. Fuck yeah, dude. I can stand that fucking disgusting, limey fucking British soil. Why would they build a statue of a person who's so contemptuous of their country that he won't even stand on its soil? There's actually a lot of shit like that in the, uh, the U.K. Cool. I believe there's a statue of Kennedy... Uh, like, there's, like, the, I think it's, like, uh, what's that, a cathedral? I'm so fucking tired, I could tell you, uh, Westminster Abbey or something, or there, there, there's some, um, um, church that has, like, pictures of, like, American shit, like, servicemen that died, and, like, George Washington shit, or in the stained glass. Oh, you mean the North Hampshire crest. What did you just change, TJ? Uh, change, right? I turned the. I realized we didn't really need the desktop volume, so I just turned it all the way down. Oh, okay. And then I, now everything sounds way better. I turned down the other mic that we're not using right now as well. I oh, that probably no helped reason, too. There's no reason for either of those to be on right now, so I just turned yeah. them both off. Scotty was sounding all hollow, and then all of a sudden he was like, "I'm Scotty, and I'm back." <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks, Scotty's TJ. back in the house. Yes. Good job, TJ. Yeah, dude. Scotty sounded like fucking. I just thought it was my headphones or some shit. I was over here fucking with him. You saw me over here. I was like listening to the stream and going, what is that? Why is the only person that sounds good TJ? It's because he's got a super hot mic over here by us, and it's like echoing us back and sounding like shit. Because Four Force TJ only gives a shit about himself, so. Yeah. What a fucking well, I didn't Enjoy really... the rich baritones of TJ for the last hour. <laughs> well, How many hours has it been since fucking Stevie left? Yeah, I don't know. Like well, six feel... hours ago he left. Yeah, so whatever. Whatever. At least you found it. I mean, it's like four hours and thirty. It sounds so ago. much better now. It's like fucking living in a new world. <laughs> a whole new Typical world. TJ. It's like my head's been a fishbowl, and I'm like, what's Scotty saying? Maybe what? I take my headphones off, because it'd be easy to hear him next to me. God damn it. 
You don't need a driver's license to hey, compete in NASCAR. Hey, Steven. Hey, it was Steven. What the fuck? Why did I call you Steven? <laughs> Steven. All right, it's starting to happen. Uh, where's the Where's the tobacco, TJ? The tobacco? Yeah. I went to roll myself a a nice tobacco. I don't have it. Well, all right. Well, that doesn't answer my question, though. I don't know where it is. I haven't touched it. I ain't seen it. Yeah, you don't know shit. TJ. I haven't even touched it today. All right, well, I guess what we I guess we know what we're doing with oh. our next fucking fifteen minute hunt. I think I know where it is. All right, Scotty. Scotty has a line. Stupid Scotty. So you don't need to dri- a driver's license to compete in NASCAR. Blah blah blah. You don't. I guess not. You'd think you would. Technically, a state driver's license is not required to compete in NASCAR. In fact, multiple professional racers have had their licenses suspended, but have still been able to compete. All right. Good stuff. The iconic Hollywood sign was supposed to be a temporary real estate marker. I knew that. Hollywood Land. Yeah, it was like a advertising a neighborhood. Yeah, the Hollywood Land neighborhood. And now people who live in that neighborhood want the sign taken down because it what? attracts too many tourists to their pro- pristine Oh, fuck them. I hate L.A. It really is just... Uh, but the people that live there are such shit sacks. Oh, yeah. You like By the way, uh, come see us in L.A. on the 21st of July. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> come see us in Los Angeles, <laughs> California, at the legendary Vance, California, where we'll be doing a show. <laughs> That's gonna be Lyndon Johnson whipped out his Johnson frequently. What? President- he was whipping out his wanger. Yep. President Lyndon Johnson referred to his Johnson as Jumbo <laughs> and had a propensity to whip out in front of colleagues at a highly inappro- at highly inappropriate times, at least according to, de- to today's standards. Johnson was also apparently jealous of Kennedy's reputation as a womanizer and set, a tr- and set out to try and top him. Having what his male aides referred to as a harem of mistresses and female colleagues he'd try and sometimes succeed to sleep with. He had Jumbo, dude. Jumbo. He'd pull out Jumbo and be like, what you think about Jumbo there? You like him? Won't come over here and pet Jumbo? This isn't my flea circus. (laughs) Isn't it, though? (laughs) It's not mine, TJ. Dude, I'm pretty sure it's your flea circus, man. (laughs) <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Dude, it's your fucking flea circus. You can tell we're all going to be sleep deprived. Like, I don't even fucking know. Who the fuck even knows what's going on at this point? That's it for this list, TJ. Move on to the next one. I don't even. Ah, uh, fuck you, dude. Dude. What does uh, even matter fuck, no fuck him. Fuck you. Fuck all fuck of you, us. Paul. All right, fuck me, too. Say something, Paul. <laughs> Eat a big fat dick, TJ. Eat a dick, 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 dick. That's what I think of that. Oh, wow. Yeah, dude. Great. Crickets for you, Paul. Well, why don't you still eat a dick? Why don't you eat a dick up while There's they crick no up? Earthly way of- hey, that was pretty good. Why don't you suck down the bone while you play the trombone? Why don't you fucking suck on Jumbo, dude? <laughs> Yeah, dude. Suck. That, yeah. that one killed me, Paul. I'm dead now. Uh, good. I'm All right. dead. So the end. All right. Do, we do, could, do, 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 do. I guess we can. Man, fucking. Whatever, what is this? Don't get all belligerent already. Got the we same got so many dumbass. Hours. Look, you can Where, already tell from the fucking thing. They got the same facts. dumbass. Lincoln wrestled. Did anyone know Lincoln wrestled? Let's see, if you actually know, TJ, you don't know half this shit. <laughs> you need to learn about the US president. <laughs> oh, God, dude. What TJ's are you, starting to unwind. Are you fucking Cartman now, dude? Shut the fuck yeah. up. You I mean, shut up, you fucking cuck, faggot we've bitch. We've got like, um, like fucking, more than six hours left, room, and TJ. TJ's already starting to Why fray at the edges. Why don't you shut your goddamn you fucking retire, fat fucking TJ? face? Give up, buddy. Quit, TJ. Yeah, dude. Uh, Pack up your balls, dude. Despite Papa Med, the dentures weren't made of wood. Wow, his dentures weren't made of wood. Holy shit. Hippopotamus, ivory, bone, wow, lead, brass, wow, gold wire. Wow, Scotty. Wow, that's fucking, that's something, brah. What a douche. That's something, man. What is this even all called? Weird facts never knew about U.S. president. All right, yeah, cool. Washington. Adams. Fucking piece of shit. 
John Adams visited Shakespeare's home in Stratford upon Avon with Thomas Jefferson before they hate each other's guts. While there, they chipped off a piece of one of Shakespeare's chairs as a souvenir. Years later, Adams was embroiled in an election battle against his vice president, Jefferson. Uh, Adams called him a mean-spirited, low-lived fellow, the son of a half-breed Indian <laughs> squaw sired by a Virginia mulatto father. Wow. They didn't fuck around back then. Mulatto. A mean-spirited, low-lived fellow. Was that okay to say back the then? The son of a half-breed Indian squaw sired by a Virginian mulatto father. Could they say mulatto back then? Was that cool? Yeah, dude, of course. And in an attack ad, warned of the consequences of a potential Jefferson presidency. Murder, robbery, rape, adultery, and incest will be openly taught and practiced. The air will be rent with the cries of the distressed. The soil will be soaked with blood and the nation black with crimes. And and we thought the twenty yeah I mean you know yeah, that's pretty fucking nuts. Dude. Dude, this, shit's, this shit's actually pretty. It just goes to pain. show that this kind of hyperbole ain't exactly. And both these guys died brand on the same day. And new. July fourth, eighteen twenty six. They'd made amends by then. The fiftieth anniversary of the Declaration of Independence, dude. Well, you know, technically Jefferson, who looks a fuck of a lot better than fucking frumpy ass little goddamn John Adams. Yeah, what there. the fuck? Little paunchy Adams there. Paunchy Adams, dude. Vandalizing Shakespeare's chair isn't the only chair-related Jefferson trivia. He invented the swivel chair. Look what he did, TJ. Something you wouldn't expect from one of the most famous politicians in American history. Jefferson hated public speaking so much that he only gave two speeches in his presidency. One per term. Dude, I fucking love the swivel chair. Thank goodness for Jefferson. Good, good what Jefferson. What would we do if we couldn't swivel? James Madison. Uh, smallest president. Only stood at 5'4". Weighed around 100 pounds. Whoa. It's crazy to think of a fucking president that I could just, like, pick up. Dude, and President like, fucking Hobbington, dude. James Monroe. He lived in a little round hill. Due to his penchant for outdated Revolutionary War era dress, Monroe's nickname was the Last Cocktat. His first term was called the Era Era of Good Feeling because of the national unity that followed the end of the War of 1812. He ran unopposed for his reelection, something that has only happened one other time in U.S. history. George Washington, the last surviving founding father, Monroe died on July fourth, eighteen thirty-one, five years after both Jefferson and Adams died, and fifty-five years after the Declaration of Independence was signed. Last one, the OG. John Quincy Adams. Man, he had some pretty awesome chops. The son, yeah. Respectable. Look at them chops, Respectable man. and resplendent. Yep. The son of our Jefferson-hating second president, John Quincy Adams, was known for skinny dipping in the Potomac River. Why is this this shit? Fine, he skinny dipped. Big fucking deal. Yeah, I like to swim in the river naked. Who cares? Andrew Jackson. One popular rumor is that Jackson taught his pet parrot how to curse. It was all fun and games until the parent had to allegedly be removed from Jackson's funeral because it wouldn't stop cursing. Jackson had a thing for uh, taking it outside. He was involved in an estimated 100 duels, usually because someone said something negative about his wife. In 1806, he was shot in the chest during one of these duels, and in 1813, he took a bullet Dude. to the arm. If you want to read some crazy shit... In a bar fight with a senator. Read about the health of Andrew Jackson. The health? The health. I mean, like, I'm not saying right now, but I'm saying just for people watching and listening... The health? His health, dude. It, what, what it, he went through some crazy fucking shit. He was an unhealthy motherfucker for most of his fucking adult life. Or, like, actually most of his life in general. Martin Van Buren, who looks kind of like a slob. I don't know. He had some good chops, too. Yeah, but he's... he's look how slovenly he is. It's all disheveled and shit. Whatever. He looks like a like an eccentric old man. Van Buren holds the title for the first president to be born in the U.S. Oh. He had a lot of nicknames. Sly Fox because of his political prowess. Little Magician because he was only 5'6". And Red Fox of Kinderhook because he had reddish hair and was from a town in upstate New York called Kinderhook. But the most long-lasting nickname goes to Old Kinderhook 
which was used during his 1840 election camp. Man, they were really desperate for a fact about this guy. They called him old Kinderhook, yeah. they did. He did something. Yeah. Three different variations of Kinderhook. <laughs> Mr. Kinderhook, Papa Kinderhook, and old Kinderhook. The Sly Fox. William Henry Harrison. During his campaign, the opposition tried to cast him as someone who'd rather sit in his log cabin drinking hard cider. Well, who the fuck wouldn't? Harrison took the criticism and made spiked lemonade. He handed out whiskey bottles in the shape of log cabins. Harrison gave the longest inauguration speech ever, 8,445 words over 90 minutes, on a wet, cold day in 1841. He fell ill soon thereafter and died 33 days into his presidency. Poor William Henry Should Harrison. Should have stayed inside. That, that's probably a good idea, yeah. Maybe don't do a 90-minute speech in the freezing cold rain. I don't know. Probably a bad idea. John Tyler. Who, damn, he looks like a haunted man, yeah. dude. He looks like a man that would haunt something. Yeah, exactly. That, too. After Harrison's untimely death, there was a disagreement over what power Tyler had as the surviving vice president. He managed to convince everyone he should just become president paving the way for the 25th Amendment, which made the line of succession official. Pr everyone pretty much hated him. He was expelled from his own party Jesus. during his presidency. His entire Ouch. cabinet, minus one person, resigned over his policies. He was the first president who faced impeachment. One newspaper editor called him a poor, miserable, despised Wow, imbecile. he was the first Trump. <laughs> he really was, dude. The New York Times called... The, the fucking failing New York Times, I think you mean, called him... The most unpopular public man uh, that had ever held office in the United States in his own obituary. Upon his death, Lincoln didn't issue a mourning proclamation and flags were not placed at Damn, his house. Damn, they pissed on his grave. What did he do? <laughs> Look at his hand. Can you imagine if that hand reached out from underneath your couch or something one day? I'd just die. That claw. Dude, this guy looks like a fucking Bond villain almost. Yeah. Looks like uh, Vigo from Ghostbusters. Not much about him. Every party was, has a lame. pooper, and that pooper was Polk. He banned booze, card playing, and dancing from the White House. Lame. What a prick. Oh. Lame president. This guy looks like fun. Zachary Taylor. While celebrating the 4th of July on the grounds where the Washington Monument would later stand, Taylor snacked on a bunch of cherries and washed it all down with iced milk. Ooh. I don't know. That doesn't sound too bad. What's wrong with iced milk? No, this is what's wrong. Bacteria was present in either the cherries or the milk, leading to his death a few days later. I'm sure it was the cherries. The milk's fine. Millard Fillmore. Millard Fillmore. Why does he look like fucking Alec Baldwin? Dude, it does. Dude, his face is a dead Whoa. ringer for fucking Alec Baldwin. I've got Whoa. Alec Baldwin. Dude, we need to do like a a Millard Fil Fillmore biopic. Fillmore married his school teacher, ooh la la. Other than that, most historians don't really have much to say about him. Even the White House website calls him an uninspiring very, man. Very, very uninspiring. Damn. So I don't know if he'd be the best biopic candidate. Maybe that just makes him the best. He's the most, like, meek and mild and unmemorable president, dude. How does someone like that even become president in the first place? You call it something like President Forgotten or some shit. Millard Fillmore. Wasn't he the guy that took over from the guy that died? Remarkable only for how much he sucked fucking yeah. dick. You can have, like, a, like a kind of sadly comic scene at his inauguration where it's like, I introduce to you your president, Millard Fillmore. And there's like one dude playing a tuba, like, brum, 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 brum. and there's like two people out there waving a little banner, like, Yay! Yay! Wee! Wee! Millard Fillmore. <laughs> Another president most people don't remember. Pierce was pretty unpopular while in office, leading to his own party refusing to renominate him. His reply to being cast out there is nothing left to do but get drunk. His penchant for the hooch might explain his alleged arrest for running over an old lady with his horse. This guy's cool. Damn. I'm down with Franklin Pierce, dude. James Buchanan. Wow, he looks like also Barbara known Bush. as Ebenezer Scrooge. Yeah. I was gonna say Ebenezer Scrooge. But Barbara <laughs> Bush works too. Um, Buchanan holds the record of being the only bachelor to be president. What a shock. <laughs> Although he may not I have wonder been. Wonder why that was. <laughs> yeah. He may not have been truly single. 
There was a lot of speculation about his sexuality. Ooh, la la. Ooh, oh, shit. Baby. A close relationship with Alabama Senator William Rufus King. I do declare. They were fucking. The I two, do declare. They were burning the midnight oil. The two lived together for more than 10 years, despite being rich enough to have their own homes. Oh, shit, dude. Andrew Jackson called them Miss Nancy and Aunt Fancy behind their backs. When King left for France in 1844, Buchanan wrote, I am now solitary and alone, having no companion in the house with me. I have gone a wooing several gentlemen, but have not succeeded with any uh, of them. Wow, so we've had a gay president. I mean, that doesn't seem all that, like, ambiguous there. That that last part is pretty yeah. dead on. I've gone wooing several gentlemen, like, but I have not succeeded with any of them. I mean, he's talking them. about... My boyfriend moved roommate. out, and I'm trying to fuck somebody else now. Right, he's couching it in the language of like, oh, I lost my roommate, and I've tried to entice several I mean, men to live with me. He said wooing, I mean, you know, whatever. Yeah, wooing is, yeah. Abraham Lincoln. Big ass ears on that motherfucker. Hey, man, what a goofy looking dude. Goofy looking some bitch. In addition to being a tall drink of water... Lincoln also serves tall drinks as a bartender. Yeah, wrestler thing. He's a really yeah. good wrestler. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, isn't that so fucking fascinating that Lincoln was a wrestler, you guys? Did you know that? No. Nope. Andrew Johnson, another beloved president. The first president to be impeached, Johnson didn't take... I'm sorry, didn't have an easy time in childhood either. After his father died... His mother sent him and his brother out as indentured servants to a tailor. Johnson and his brother ran away two years right. later. The tailor put out a reward of $10 for their capture, but they were never apprehended. Using what he learned during his time with the tailor, he made all of his own suits as president. Wow. Ooh, all right. I mean, I mean fair. I could think of a better things that a president should spend his time doing than sewing his own suits. But whatever. Yeah, he should be watching Fox News. Yeah. Ulysses S. Grant. I mean, I don't know if he's the most badass president, but, but look it looks like he's the most badass president so far. Yeah, definitely. Grant was supposed to be in Lincoln's theater box on the night of his assassination, but changed his plans at the last minute. He regretted not being there for the rest of his life because he believed he could have stopped it from happening. Other fun facts about Grant. He couldn't stand the sight of blood, which is ironic considering his Civil War history, and he dismantled the KKK during his presidency. They unfortunately regrouped decades later. Like all bad ideas and do in America. And he likes to drink. Rutherford B. Hayes. A man of beardliness. That is a that is a good beard. Beardliness is next to He godliness. looks like the fucking shovel guy from Home Alone. <laughs> yeah. You're right, dude. Uh, the victor of one of the most disputed elections ever. He lost the popular vote by 250,000, but eked out an electoral college win by a single vote, earning him the nickname Rother Fraud <laughs> and his fraudulency. Uh, was also called Granny Hayes because he didn't drink, smoke, or gamble. Uh, what a puss bag. Yeah, what a granny. You need to either drink, smoke, or gamble. Pick one. Yeah, you need to do one of those things. There's another assassinated president. Another nice beard on this man. James A. Garfield. I think he died pretty quick in office, though. Uh, amb he was ambidextrous. He could write in Greek with one hand and Latin with the other at the same time. Uh, he was shot a few months into his presidency by an assassin and died 11 weeks later. That must have been a shitty 11 weeks. Doctors tried using newly invented metal detector by Andrew Graham Bell to locate the bullet, but the metal bed springs kept messing up the result maybe move him off that bed yeah, put him on a board or something i don't know leading the doctors to cut in the wrong places okay so that's retarded chester a arthur this Ooh. guy looks like a doughy a little bitch tons. yeah he's, a, he's i don't know he's a fatty president and get with it Robert arthur wanted the white house down. completely redecorated but needed money to pay for all the new furniture his solution sell off 24 wagons Wagon loads of historical relics, including a pair of Lincoln's pants and one of John Quincy Adams hats. The redecoration wasn't the only luxury he took. He also owned elaborate clothing, including 80 different pairs of pants, earning him the nickname Elegant Arthur. How elegant. <laughs> wow, he was a fancy pants. Fancy pants. Damn, we got another fucking This fatty. guy doesn't look like a fancy pants. Ooh, Grover fucking Cleveland here. Oh, boy. Look at that bow tie. Mm-hmm. And that uh, I'm a principal or a police chief mustache he's got, yep. too. 
Uh, upon the death of his law partner, Cleveland became the legal guardian to his friend's 11-year-old orphan daughter. Ten years later, they were married at the White House. Damn. Ooh, that's a little weird. A little, a little creepy there, Grover Cleveland. Making her the youngest first lady ever at the age of 21 and making him the Woody Allen of the 19th century. Uh, I bet nobody cared. No, no, I'm sh I don't think anyone gave a shit then. Uh, Sein uh, not Seinfeld's dad. Uh, what's the Frazier's. Fucking Frazier's dad, yeah. Benjamin Harrison here. The grandson of President William Henry Harrison, he was called the Human Iceberg uh, by some for how stiff he was with people. Uh, maybe people misread anxiety for stiffness, though. He was the first president to have electricity in the White House and was so scared of being electrocuted that he refused to touch the light switches and was known to go to bed with all the lights on. So, a weirdo, basically. <laughs> what a poor, tortured fucking soul, dude. Yeah. Grover Cleveland again. Yeah, he's back. <laughs> he's back. No, this isn't a typo. Cleveland is the only president to hold office for two non-consecutive terms. Here's a fact that isn't as creepy as the first. Part of Cleveland's jaw was made of vulcanized rubber as a result of a secret surgery on his friend's yacht. What? I want to know more about that story, but okay. Hey, what's uh, up with that? He got <laughs> cancer. Okay. But why do you have there a pictures of this surgery, though? Or is it there in that picture? What uh, the fuck? President Dracula's butler. <laughs> um, <laughs> William McKinley. Oh, no, no. <laughs> McKinley considered carnations his good luck charm and wore them everywhere. On September 6, 1901, he gave a little girl the carnation from his lapel and was shot by an assassin a short time later. He Whoops. died the following Whoa. week. Should have kept that carnation on his lapel. Dumb shit. Theodore Roosevelt. Wow. On Valentine's Day in 1884, both his wife and mother died. A page from his journal that day. The light has gone out of my life. Yeah, no shit. Fuck, dude. Unrelated to the super depressing diary entry, while delivering a speech, Roosevelt was shot and had this to say about it. I don't know whether you fully understand that I have just been shot. I give you my word. I do not care a rap about being shot. Not a rap. He finished his hour and a half speech with a bullet lodged in his chest. In short, the dude was pretty great and worthy of having said greatness commemorated. A toy maker uh, did just that by producing teddy bears in his honor. After news got out that Roosevelt refused to shoot a bear cub on a hunting wow. trip. I had no idea that that was the origin of the teddy bear. Yeah, I did know about him completing a speech while after being shot. I've heard shot. that story before, yeah. That's pretty hardcore. Taft! Yes! Taft! 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 What a statesman making a call. Dude, Taft is fucking God. Look at that grin on his face. He knew, man. God tier president right here, my man. Look at that shit eating grin. That big pendulous gut swinging down between his legs. And you know, like, when he was elected, he knew the whole time, like, I am the fattest president. I may be the fattest president ever. Grover there Cleveland. may never be a fucking president. Grover Cleveland ain't right. got shit on me. Ladies and gentlemen of America, I can say to you with the greatest of confidence that I am the fattest of your presidents. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. How could you not love him? Go back up. I don't even care. Don't read this shit. I just want to look at him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Zoom in on that fucking wry smile he's got on his face. Because you know what? That's not a presidential face, TJ. Oh, wait a minute. What happened? Yeah, I think it just scrolled. Scrolled. Just scrolled a yeah, there you go. Look at that face. That's Here, not I'll, a, just, I'll just open a new tab so it doesn't fuck with it. That's not a presidential smile. Look at that, dude. He knows something's up. That's like a Santa Claus smile yep. almost. Ho, 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 the mistletoe hung where you can see. Yeah, yeah, dude. Come on, dude. <laughs> he was Santa in disguise. Santa in disguise. <laughs> Who doesn't love him? <clears throat> All right, hold on. <coughs> <coughs> Taft is most well known for his waistline and supposedly getting stuck in a bathtub, though historians say it didn't happen. But what people don't talk about enough is his stuffed animal. Toy manufacturers believe teddy bears would fade out and wanted a replacement. They came up with the Billy Possum. Oh, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 the Billy Possum. Teddy, bear, oh, teddy bears shit. are on the way out. We need something new. Oh, God, uh, the teddy bears. Time uh, has the, come. How about the Billy Possum, sir? <laughs> 
So I want a Billy Possum. Teddy bears now. around to Dude, this we gotta day. We got to market a Billy Possum. We got to bring back the Billy Possum. <laughs> Unfortunately, the origin tale has nothing to do with Taft sparing a baby possum and everything to do with him uh, scarfing down a huge <laughs> possum dinner one night. Of course, dude. Despite rude anti-teddy bear postcards like the one below, Billy Possum did not catch on. Oh, uh, you speak too soon, sir. The D DFF official William Howard Taft Billy Possum has to happen, guys. We gotta do it. Hold on, dude. Man. I bet the chat. I bet the chat's going nuts with people that say that they would buy a Billy Possum, dude. Who who wants a Billy Possum in the chat? Get your Billy Possums here. There it is, dude. That's oh the shit, answer, dude. That's the answer to the. All right, well we'll update it. We'll make it look actually cute for you guys, and not like a weird alien that you <laughs> want to throw in the trash. How's that? No, dude. The Billy Possum. This is God tier. I don't know what you fucking talking this is the about. Clear, the fucking clear replacement to the teddy bear. You know what the real problem is? He's not fat. The Billy Possum should be ridiculously fat. Yeah. Woodrow Wilson. It's like a affable fellow. Mm. He does it. You know, I've seen uh, some soft faced gentlemen before, and this guy. Like, he doesn't even have a lower lip. He just sucks it in like, f fucking so pissed. In 1919, incredible stress led Wilson experiencing a series of strokes. He was left you partially paralyzed and almost blind, but stayed in office until 1921. He relied heavily on his wife, Edith Boiling Galt, a descendant of Pocahontas! Whoa! Whoa. Exclamation points for help, leading, her, leading to her nickname as the Presidentress. Wow, so we've already broken that glass ceiling. I mean, he was, like, half blind and stroked out, so she basically ran the country for a while. Warren G. Harding. Only two years for him, too. Uh, Harding had quite the wandering eye. He had an affair with his wife's close friend, Carrie Fulton Phillips, Oof. which was revealed through a series of love letters. He also messed around with a woman named Nan Britton who wrote a book called The President's Daughter about how her daughter was Harding's. In 2005, thanks to DNA testing, it was proven that he was, in fact, the baby oh, shit, daddy. Dude. So he had a wandering dick He was syndrome. the president that was down to fuck, dude. Fuck he wandering eye. He was it not was the first, dick. nor was he the last. Calvin Coolidge. All right. Looks like a weaselly little son of a bitch to yeah, me. He looks like a dork. Coolidge had a morning ritual of having someone rub Vaseline on his head while he ate breakfast. Whoa. Well, I knew it. He is a fucking weirdo. The unusual dude. also extended to his choice of pets. Two raccoons named Reuben and Rebecca who would sometimes run around the White House. Oh, I'm going to have my breakfast. Rub right. the Vaseline off my head. Calvin Coolidge, officially weirdo. Herbert Hoover. Oh, looks like an affable guy. Yeah, he, he looks friendly. Dogs. He loves dogs. He's a dog-loving dog man. You know, if somebody's <clears throat> good to dogs, you can usually tell that they're a decent person. He's got a nice smile, too, you know? He looks friendly. Yeah, he looks like a welcoming dude. He's seen as an out-of-touch president, though. <clears throat> Whatever. He's, he's great. Not to be outdone... I'm just judging presidents by their appearance, dude. Not to be outdone by Coolidge's odd choice in pets, Hoover's son had two pet alligators who also ran around White House grounds. All right, that's a little strange. Whatever. It's kind of cool, though. Hoover and his wife lived in China for a time and would speak Mandarin in the White House when they wanted to have a private conversation. Rumor has it Hoover requested his servants be invisible. Their choices, jump into a closet to hide when Hoover entered a room or be fired. Cool. Damn. Not as friendly he as he looks, but whatever. He didn't like to see the help. He liked his dog. That's all that really matters. Franklin D. Roosevelt. Another pimp. This is a, Look dude, he looks like fucker. fucking Hugh Hefner and shit, dude. I don't know what you heard about me. FDR was obsessed with his dog, Fala. He insisted on being the only one who was allowed to feed him and even made Fala an honorary army private during World War II. Jesus. Fala was so popular with the press and the American public that he became the subject of a comic strip, and MGM even made two movies about him. What? Wow. Fala is the only pet to be immortalized in a presidential memorial alongside his owner. Dude, he loved Fala. <clears throat> Eleanor Roosevelt didn't have to change her last name when she married FDR because they're cousins. Her uncle and his cousin, Teddy Roosevelt, walked her down the aisle. Uh, but that's not the only president he was related to. Also distant relatives, Washington, both Adamses, Madison, Van Buren, 
both Harrisons, Taylor, Grant, and Taft. Um, also, Winston Churchill. Whoa, dude. Uh, welcome to the new Habsburg dynasty. <laughs> this is why our presidents keep getting dumber. They're inbred. Yeah. FDR was really afraid of the number 13 and refused to have dinner with that number of people or leave for a trip on the 13th of any month. His battle with uh, what was then thought to be polio, new research suggests he actually suffered from Gullian Barb syndrome. I don't know what that is. Is now widespread, but back then the public didn't really know much about it or how bad his paralysis was. The media rarely mentioned it, and the Secret Service allegedly yanked out the film from any photographers who tried grabbing a photo of him in his wheelchair. <clears throat> but yeah, he served a fucking the infinite term too. Yeah, he's he's the reason why the presidents are limited now to two terms. Harry S. Truman. This better not be that his fucking the fucking S shit. He met his wife, Bess, in Sunday school when he was six. Talk about locking it down. Hey, you know what? There must Some... not have been much interesting about this guy. Either that or he just met, a, you know, <coughs> he was actually uh, ever when he was Dwight six. D. Eisenhower. Uh, actually, Truman was pretty much, was like, he left the presidency in poverty. And they actually, uh, Congress, uh, like, actually approved a pension. And then at the time, the only living president, I believe, was uh, Herbert Hoover, who actually, like, though he was really wealthy, also accepted the pension to kind of help um, Truman save face. All right. It's another little fact about Truman. Dwight D. Eisenhower. So the, there wasn't much about him, TJ. The D stands so for dick. I give you some dick. more fucking facts and you fucking whine and bitch like a little fucking I didn't faggot. say, I didn't like literally said nothing. You know what? He TJ, looks like exactly somebody said. whose head is about to explode from scanner attack. But who's happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> He's been waiting for the scanner. That's a man that's like, wants some pudding, dude. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I can totally see him chowing down on some He's tapioca like, hmm, or something. Tapioca pudding yeah. for dinner tonight. <laughs> That's what he had to think about to get this smile out for the picture. Mmm, mm. tapioca. Nice bowl of room temperature tapioca. Uh, Ike changed the name of FDR's presidential Maryland retreat from Shangri-La to Camp David. His reason Shangri-La was just a little too fancy for a Kansas farm boy. <laughs> I like simple things like tapioca. Like tap Pudd. Good solid American. Man. John F. Kennedy. This better not be he fucked Marilyn Monroe. He fucked Marilyn Monroe in a sweet knows. fucking pussy. JFK received $1 million on his 21st birthday. All nine brothers and sisters got the same. It's pretty nice 21st birthday but present. But that generosity did not extend to the Harvard recommendation letter his father wrote for him. He wrote that Jack was careless and lacks application. He got in anyway. Of course he did. Of course he He's did. He's a Kennedy. He's a Kennedy. Lyndon B. Johnson. Looks like an asshole. Yeah, he looks like a total prick. Looks like the kind of guy that would fucking... Whip his dick out. I mean, you know, he wouldn't. He doesn't look like he'd stab you in the back, but he looks like he'd stab you in the front and laugh. And he'd just fight you every step of the way on everything, too. JFK's unexpected assassination led to Johnson becoming president, but another factor that made his presidency possible was a fateful trip to the bathroom. Let me explain. While enlisted in the military during World War II, Johnson boarded a plane called the Wabash Cannonball. Uh, for his one and only bombing mission in the South Pacific, but he had to use the bathroom really bad, so he got off and took care of business. By the time he got back, the Wabash cannonball had left. The plane ended up crashing, and everyone on it perished. Wow. <coughs> Sounds like smart planning. He's all like, you yeah, I gotta take a big shit, you guys. Yeah, be, right back. About this. be right back. Let's just leave without Johnson. He's a useless cocksucker anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Saved by the dump, dude. It's all right, because I'm saved by my dumb. You think, you think like, a dude that was saved by one of his turds would not have look so sour, but whatever. Richard Nixon, who totally looks like he was carved out of a squash. <laughs> he does look like he's got like yeah. a pumpkin carving. Yeah, face. you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> How did you come up with that? Because it's so true, but I never would have landed. I don't know. It's just the first thing that popped in my damn head. I am, in fact, a squash. <laughs> Uh, Nixon loved to. I am not a squash. <laughs> yeah, he is. Nixon loved to bowl so much he had a one lane alley put oh, in the basement of the shit. White House. Who gives a shit? <laughs> There's got to be more interesting stuff about Nixon. Gerald Ford. Huh? Another bland, uninspiring you know, president. I feel like uh, looking at him, he looks like the dumbest president so far. Yeah, he looks like a football coach or something. He was a football player. Yeah. Well, there you, you go. You he definitely has that football look to him. Yep. 
I like to chase ball up and down the field. <laughs> His real name was Leslie Lynch King Jr. Whoa, Lynch King? Kind of offensive, don't Whoa. you think? Remember this, the next uh, trivia night at your local bar. Ford is the only president to never be elected by the voting public to president or vice president. Uh, first vice president, Spiro Agnew, resigned shortly followed thereafter by Nixon. Ford's daughter, Susan, hoisted, uh, hosted her hoisted. senior... <laughs> whatever. Hoisted her dress up over her fucking head <laughs> at the senior prom what in the a, White House. What a slut. Susan Ford. Total slut. slut. <laughs> Offered up her pussy to all of fucking his cabinet members and stuff. Damn, dude. This is Man, that crazy. Ford had some crazy shit about him. Man. Two different assassins try to take Ford's life within over a span of 17 days. Both, Both women. Not a ladies' man, dude. <laughs> Damn. No. They wanted Ford fucking dead, dude. Jimmy pussy bitch ass Carter. <laughs> the really I we could have measured tonight's thing in Jimmy Carter's, dude. dude it would have been. We fun. probably could have. And truly, the I cannot tell a lie, president, if there ever was one. Was oh Jimmy. man, just a. Rube. I award <laughs> Jimmy Carter one hundred <laughs> Justin Bieber's. He's our first total rube of a president. A, a president. Wait, you know? uh, wait, 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 what? Dude, Jimmy Carter was a fucking disastrous president. All yeah, right, that's a good idea. Is that, you know what though? So <coughs> what fact you got? Se uh, Carter appeared in an unlikely publication, Playboy, uh, and also got a lot of grief because of the following remarks. I've looked on a lot of women with lust. I've committed adultery in my heart many times. That is something that God recognizes I will do and I have done, and God forgives me for it. It was during a presidential campaign, too, which made the outcry even more pronounced. Carter refused to apologize. So saying, yeah, well, he's like, why the would he? Honest president, dude. Because, like, honestly, like, what did people expect the president to never look at a chick and be like, "Man, I love to Damn. tap that." Yeah, no, presidents aren't supposed to get boners, dude. Well, Jimmy Carter got big boners. Ronald dude, Reagan. one weirdo to the next, too. Ronald Carter, Reagan. Weird ass, wrinkly face. <laughs> B movie actor. Looks like your looks like somebody's grandma got a man's <laughs> haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that, dude. He looks like one of the California raisins. <laughs> uh, Reagan regularly consulted with an astrologer, John Quigley, before making decisions and scheduling oh, big events. That's great to All know. Right. So good to know he was yeah. a retard. I know why the conservatives love him so much. What of moon is it? George H. W. Bush. Looks kind of like a pencil pusher or whatever, but he's not an un. He's kind of a, a handsome dude. Bush you know? inspired a Japanese word, Bushu. Wait. Bushisuru, which means to do the Bush thing. What thing you ask? Vomiting in public, as Bush did all over the Japanese Prime That's Minister awesome, in 1992. Dude. Wow, he puked all over him. Good stuff. Well, fucking gaff machine. Oh, dude, is that it? Yeah. You can watch him puke all over. The videotape that shows clearly what happened when nausea and fell forward. It appears he lost consciousness as he toppled over onto his host. One camera in the dining room was there locked is, in right on there. the head table when President Bush was overcome by nausea and fell forward. <clears throat> it appears he lost consciousness as he toppled over onto his host, Prime Minister Miyazawa. The new scenes show First Lady Barbara Bush acting quickly, recognizing her husband needed help, bringing her napkin to his mouth, then stepping back to let the secret... It's because he thought about the fact that Jeb was his son, you know? He's like, <laughs> puked all over. <laughs> Have a nice sushi fucking meal. Maybe with the, the Prime Japanese Minister. Prime Minister asked, like, how is your son? And he's like, oh, George Jr., yeah, he's great. He's, and he's great. Like, what about your other son? What was his name? Jeb. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> William. Well, it's time for Jay <laughs> Clinton. I heard some crazy stuff about this guy. I heard he blew a load on some chick's dress once. <laughs> you damn right. It's a rumor. <laughs> You goddamn right I did. Bill has two Grammys, one for spoken word album and another for best spoken word album for children. Um That's what you thought of what? Bill Clinton. <laughs> all, oh, right. all right. All right. Well, all right. It's not my fact page, I guess. W. George W. Bush. W. Oh man. Just hold on, go back look into this man's eyes. Do you see anything there? Anything. It's like looking at Dinor's eyes. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, it really is. Just emptiness, vacancy. Yep. W was high school's head cheerleader. I knew that. Whatever. Some black dude. Oh, bummer. I don't know. While living in Indonesia, Obama had a pet ape called Tata. Um, 
He his experience working at a Baskin Robbins as a teen made him hate ice cream, faggot. In high school, he used to be called O Bomber for his basketball skills Damn. and for the fact that he was a terrorist. While studying at Harvard, he applied to be featured in a black pinup calendar. The all female committee declined. Whoa. You you made a mistake. Yeah. You should have known he was gonna be president. Dude, you one know how day. much that calendar could have come back and been sold for? Yeah. The Obama pinup. Obama pinup, dude. What a miss. Wait, there's no Trump fact? Damn, dude. <laughs> fact. He's the most embarrassing thing to ever happen in the United States. How's that? Yeah, who was that? Fre- yeah, whatever. Motherfuckers. Who beat him? No one. I was just trying to remember which one of these presidents was like the the OG Trump that everyone hated. Oh, um, <clears throat> the fuck was that guy's name? That doesn't matter. Why ancient Rome kept choosing bizarre and perverted? Because it's fun. Why wouldn't they? I mean, this is like stuff we kind of debunked a lot of, you know. Whoa! Why does Bieber keep coming up? Baby, baby, baby. Well, some of the stuff actually they do, they do actually do get into that. Like, Nero, Nero, Nero. Oh, <clears throat> could someone just take my place here for a minute and scroll through this fucking shit? Sure. Oh my god, TJ, you were. I'll be back in a minute, dude. Aren't we almost at the our break anyway, TJ? Nope. Yeah, we're like we are. 20 Come minutes. Back. We're Come like back. 20 minutes from our break. You're going to get to smoke as many yes, cigarettes as you are. want. You're a fucking lazy piece of shit, dude. Oh, my fucking God. For a, no, it's not another hour, TJ. Dude, it happens at like 6 fucking 30. It's like or 620 or some shit. Oh, my go God. Fucking... TJ is such a fucking lazy cred in this fuck, dude. It's nearly 6 a.m., TJ. Already flagging over here. Hey, yeah. Uh, All right, you, man. You TJ's it. TJ's area, dude. It smells. It stinks like ass over here. I think we all smell like ass at this point. Dude. Yeah, but I mean, like, oh, it smells real bad. I don't. I mean, it's not real bad, but it's kind of pervasive over Fuck, here. Fuck, dude. TJ's booty. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Cali- and we know about Caligula and pot. That probably didn't happen, by the way. It's probably just a Julia rumor. Yeah, that's that's it's more likely just a rumor. Uh, Nero was like Justin Bieber controlling an army. So Nero, Ember from eighty thirty seven to uh, was it ninety eight? Um, I can't read it. It's oh bit. yeah, sorry, eighty thirty seven to eighty sixty eight. Oh sixty eight. Okay. Uh, he he at last invented an extraordinary kind of diversion, which was to be let out of a den in the arena. Covered with the skin of a wild beast, and then assail it with violence, the private parts of both men and women. So he liked to dress up like a leopard and um, bite people's wee wees and and vajijis. And this is under best gossip. So this is like right. this is Suetonius, who was notorious for gossiping about all the Roman emperors. So he likewise sang tragedies in a mask. The visitors of the heroes and gods, and also of the heroines and goddesses, being formed into a resemblance of his own face and that of any woman he was in love with. So, yeah, he liked to dress up like chicks. Yeah, dressed in drag. So, more, you know, Suetonius, yeah. Suetonius, the fucking forked tongue oh, liar. How he got power. Uh, Nero illustrated once again the over reliance in Roman culture on familial connections. When he was a boy, Barrett says, I don't think anybody would have imagined he'd become an emperor. But Nero benefited from the work of his mother, Agrippina, a talented manipulator who became the fourth wife of Emperor Claudius and masterminded promotions and appointments. Okay. So we kind of talked a little, not maybe not about Nero, but it looks like he came to power like a lot of these dudes did family connections and political machinations and bullshit. But uh, once he became in charge himself, his various idiosyncrasies became more obvious. Well, of course. There's no check on the emperor. Uh, Among other things, Nero seemed more obsessed with being an artist than a politician. We're told he was a competent poet, Barrett says, that just wasn't the right skill for a leader. Maybe, Maybe more so now than back then. I don't know. Poet leaders now, and of course the famous thing with Nero is, you know, Nero played the fiddle while Rome burned. Says during the Great Fire of Rome in 64 A.D., Nero actually acted prudently. 
He had buildings torn down to help stop the movement of the fire, and after the blaze had been uh, had subsided, he instituted stricter building codes. So, I mean, he did pretty much what he should have done. No, he was a fucking... He played so where fire. did the myth about the middle... Uh, not the, the fit middle. The fiddle come from? Soon after the fire, Nero's plans for a palace in the center of the city cemented his reputation as a decadent and out-of-touch leader, and that reputation survived long after the real story behind the fire was forgotten. Wow. So basically, you want to do some ostentatious project, and they're like, well, you know what happened when the city was on fire? Nero, old Nero up there in the fucking palace was playing a fiddle. Playing that damn fiddle. Just fiddling what away. a piece of shit. <clears throat> Sawing away on so the just fiddle. Your comment political rhetoric. Oh, Commodus. Check him out. So if you guys remember the movie Gladiator, this is the emperor uh, that's featured as Commodus. Right. I mean, obviously, that's just a... Why don't they love me? The best gossip. He actually cut off the head of the Colossus and substituted it for a likeness of his own head. Fuck, dude. Then, <clears throat> having given it a club and placed a bronze lion at its feet so as to cause it to look like Hercules. So he liked him some Hercules. He descended to the arena from his palace above and cut down all the domestic animals that approached him. And uh, some also that were led up to him or were brought before him in nets. He also killed a tiger, a hippopotamus, and an elephant. Okay. Cassius Dio. I am Cassius Dio. <laughs> so how do you get power? You may be familiar with Commodus from the movie yeah. Gladiator. In reality, he probably didn't come to power by murdering his father, Marcus Aurelius. Instead, he became emperor because his father was overly sentimental. Uh, one of the emperor's most beloved and admired is Marcus Aurelius, says Ando. True. And when Marcus Aurelius died, he had to know his son was unsuitable. But as soon as the first emperor uh, to have a son had one, he turned around and gave it to his son. The binds of family were powerful in Roman culture, even though the ability to find good leadership through good blood has been disproven many times. Even before Rome became an empire, noble families were painstakingly preserved, uh, were a painstakingly preserved tradition, and that culture was hard to break away from. From there, bad advisors didn't help. One aspect uh, of each of their reigns, Ando says, is that their reigns went bad more or less in lockstep with the speed with which they shed intelligent off, uh, officers and replaced them with people who enabled their weirdness. Yeah. Well, that's just so common. It's like, look at someone like, let's say, like Prince. I mean, when he was alive, he surrounded himself with fucking yes men and you know, you wanted to meet with him. You had to sign a non-disclosure agreement. I mean, emperors were the same way, except they don't even greater power trip. Like, Commodus was going to replace anyone that was sensible with him with people who were just like, that's a great idea, Commodus. You want to dress up as a gladiator and fuck a goat? Why not? Caracalla massacred, or is it Caracalla? I don't know. He massacred his own people at any rate. Um, the best gossip. There were many others, too, formerly friends of his that he put to death. One day he slew a hundred boars at one time with his own hands. Damn. Whoa. Like killing shit. While yet, yet claiming again, to be the most deal. pious of all mankind, he indulged in a, to an extravagant degree in bloodshed, putting to death four of the Vestal Virgins, one of whom he had himself outraged uh, when he had still been able to do so, for later all of his sexual power had disappeared. Wow. Oh, fuck, dude. So he got to the point where he couldn't even get it up. You're impotent, sir. Uh, Carasala was a military leader. He savagely raised Roman soldiers' pay, uh, who had some measure of competence in his job. And uh, to some degree, Caracalla, Carasala, whatever, simply kept power through brutality. Uh, he does seem, Ando said, to have... Uh, had an extraordinarily bad temper and be willing to exact terrible massacres on his own people. However, the leader wasn't completely irrational in his savagery. Some of his brutality helped him to consolidate power. Ando also notes that Carasala, while brutal, wasn't necessarily insane by a Roman emperor's standard. One judicial proceeding we have, for example, shows Carasala had sane and cogent observations. Uh, Carasala was in many ways quite able, Barrett agrees, there's a lot of sound legislation with respect to Roman citizenship. So he wasn't crazy, but he was still despotic. You know? Just an asshole. Yeah, he was just an asshole. He didn't give a shit. You pissed him off, you're dead. He could, he could reason with you, but he was just as likely to chop your fucking head off. Uh, Elagalibus 
Elagabalus. 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 Okay. Was a pervert for the ages. Cool. Um, had a fucking white, not white guilt TJ. That's not a thing. Um, had a fucking page boy cut, TJ haircut, yeah. haircut though. This fucking terrible haircut. I will not. This is the like, best gossip. I will not describe the barbaric chants which uh, Sar Sardanopolis, together with his mother and grandmother, chanted to Alagabalus. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> fucking fuck these names. Uh, or the secret sacrifices that he offered to him, slaying boys and using charms. In fact, actually shutting up alive in the god's temple a lion with a monkey and a snake and throwing in among them human genitals and practicing other unholy rites while he invariably wore innumerable amulets. I love how that screed begins with, I will not describe, and then goes on to describe all the horrible <laughs> things he's doing. Uh, you have no idea the stuff they left out, though, Paul. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> For he wished to have the reputation of committing adultery. What? So that in this respect, too, uh, he might imitate the most lewd women and would often allow himself to be caught in the very act in consequence of which he used to be violently un upbraided by his husband and beaten so that he had black eyes. What? Uh, I don't understand. And all the stuff comes from. I don't even know what the, he's being accused Cassius of. Cassius <laughs> Theo, another uh, fucking scandalous. Uh, just fucking fourteen of the when time. he became emperor. Uh, Elagabalus, whatever. I can see why he didn't become famous because no one unique. wanted to fucking do the, deal with that. Um, it was unique. Caligula, yeah. step aside. They say, if you simply go by what you're told, Barrett says, I'm just gonna call him Ellie. <laughs> It's easier. Ellie, yeah. Ellie probably takes first prize for being just a complete and utter nutcase. Among many other things, the rumors say he tried to change Rome's religion and he dressed up so he could prostitute himself. Cool. cool. Um, Ellie was Caracoli's cousin. but Caracolas. Whatever. Maternal aunt campaigned for him to lead Rome. Uh, the explanation for his rise is simply after that. If you want to understand how the Roman Empire ended up having at the very top of the pyramid someone who was more or less wildly inappropriate, Ando says, one answer is that they never gave up on blood as a rule of succession. Which is such an easy way to determine, like, this you reliance came on from me, succession. I am in power, so you should rule. This reliance on succession kept the best leaders from rising to the top, but the Romans never adopted any other mechanism. When there wasn't a good uh, blood relative in line, uh, in line, Romans pursued the formality of adoption to maintain a long-standing preference for family ties. Um, many of these emperors had extremely small circles of advisors who often did the grunt work of running the vast empire. The number of people who had direct access to the empire was actually rather small, says Ando. The emperors ruled through networks of officials, and those officials were often more competent. They propped up the insanity at the top. So they were basically just puppets for the most part. Yeah, kind of kinda like how Trump's cronies do all the, the, the leg work. What's more, most people scattered across the vast Roman Empire didn't pay much attention. It didn't matter how nutty Caligula was, Ando says, unless he did something crazy with tax policy. While those living in uh, military provinces could have been affected by the emperor's decree, those in far-flung civil civilian provinces might have barely noticed the change from one emperor to another. All that underlines the real truth about imperial power in Rome. Yes, there were some crazy emperors, and some of the rumors were probably true, but the most bizarre, bizarre things about the Roman Empire wasn't the emperors. It was the political structure that made them so powerful in the first place. Yeah, the, the, the idea of an emperor to begin with. But as you see, I mean, emperors, I mean, largely, especially late, I mean, there was emperors that clearly controlled the, I mean, Roman, uh, the, as far as the Roman political system, like Augustus Caesar clearly was a master of the Roman political system. But you had later ones that were just puppets, people that, you know, were basically appointed on a whim and then murdered on a whim if they didn't do what, you know, the people around them wanted them to do. So, I mean, some people, some of these emperors did actually have true power, but a lot of them later on were just basically puppets. All right, here's 10 things we didn't know about the Romans. Gladiatorial fighting was not the most popular entertainment. Oh, yeah. Well, what was? 
The seating capacity of the main venues formed a rough and ready index of the popularity of the different public Oh, yes, shows. Smarty Pants TJ, is that so? I guess. I don't Tell know. me some more about it then. The arena for... What are you doing? <laughs> for gladiatorial know. combat. <laughs> I don't know. The Coliseum, known in antiquity as the Flavian Amphitheater. Flavian! Was huge. Modern archaeologists has made it accommodate 50,000 people. One ancient source put the number even higher at 87,000. I've been, been there, and it's a pretty impressive site. Yet it was dwarfed by the Circus Maximus, where some... I saw that, too. I think that I have to play this now. You know... Circus go. Maximus, where some 250,000 could watch chariot racing, despite the popularity of pantomime closer to our ballet than modern pantomime. Uh, theatrical shows came off a poor third. The largest theater in Rome, that of Marcellus, could hold a mere 20,500 people. So people like the races. That was their favorite thing. So racing was like top shit. And then beneath that was like, yeah, gladiators. Yeah, and then that beneath that, cool. like art. You know, and most gladiatorial combat was not to the death, and they had, and it's widely believed there was referees. So I mean, a lot of things you know about gladiators is also bullshit. I don't like you, Scotty. You're wrong. Roman warships were not rowed by slaves. Yeah, they were. All these things they're trying to convince you are bullshit. Heave ho, heave ho. In almost all the sword and sandals movies and novels, when a galley, a large ship propelled primarily by rowing, appears. We hear the clank of slave chains and the cracking of overseer's whips. Both are completely anachronistic. The Romans, like the Greeks, had an ideology called civic militarism. It was believed that if you were a citizen, you had a duty to fight for your state. And conversely, if you fought, you were entitled to political rights. This excluded the use of slave rowers or slave soldiers like those of medieval Islam. Whoa. In the handful of exceptional uh, times when slaves were admitted to the armed forces, they were either freed before enlistment or promised manumission if they perform well in battle. Hmm. They did not all die young. The average life expectancy, although all such figures are uncertain, was only about 25. However, this did not mean that no one lived into their... Uh, into their 30s or in old age. The average was skewed by the number of women who died giving birth and by high infant mortality. If a Roman made it to maturity, yep. they were likely to so live much, as long as people adulthood. in the modern Western world. You'd probably live a, a pretty normal life, 50, 60 years. So if you if you made it past the, the rough patch of, like, you know, childhood, then you were just, you were likely to live, you know, basically as long as a person does now. Yeah. Very few Roman hours lasted an hour. Like us, the Romans divided the day into 24 hours, but unlike us, their hours varied in length. For the Romans, there were always 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness. Thus, for example, a daylight hour in high summer was considerably longer than one in midwinter. Okay. Not all Romans spoke Latin. Stretching from the Atlantic to the Tigris... The Roman Empire contained perhaps 65 million inhabitants, while Latin was the language of the army and of Roman law. All right. The Roman elite was bilingual. For them, knowledge of Greek was a badge of status. As such, it was similar to French for aristocrats across Europe in the 18th and 19th centuries. So internalized was the Roman usage uh, when the senators assassinated Julius Caesar they shouted out not in Latin, but in Greek. Oh, damn, they're fancy. Yeah, they when they're murdering their fucking leader, they want you to know that they're fucking high. Latin, a common tongue. Not fit. Many Romans dislike philosophy. No shit. Philosophy's for faggots, you know. The empire produced eminent philosophers such as Seneca and Marcus Aurelius, yet some Romans were hostile to philosophy for two main reasons. First, it was a Greek inventions, and the Greeks the were a conquered Greek. race. Roman attitudes to the Greeks were very mixed. Second, the study of philosophy with its hair-splitting definitions and its concentration on the inner man could be considered unfit um, to unfit a man for an active life that would so serve the state. Too much of a pussy. You're too much of a... Quit thinking and serve the state, bitch. The state. Stop all this thinking, hibbity jibbity. Well, they, the Roman, the, I mean, the Perform Roman Empire, your duty to the state. They had a fucking very strong streak of nationalism. 
they kind of permeated their culture, kind of like American culture. That's why that's why you see so many parallels, and people go, "America's like Rome." It's because of shit like that. Yeah, even I mean, Galen lived back then. You see that? Oh damn, dude! The latter view had long been held by some Greeks. Galen, the doctor to the imperial court. Yeah, sure. Remark that Romans regarded philosophy as being of no more use than drilling holes in millet seeds. Wow. I guess that's probably guess that's not too useful. A, I guess that basically means <gasps> a waste of time. There were sexual do's and don'ts. When haven't there been? I mean, yeah, like that's every society ever. You couldn't just do anything? Uh, the great French scholar Paul Vane said that the, the Romans were paralyzed by sexual inhibitions. Well, of course a Frenchman would think that. While that might have been going too far, there were strict limits to socially acceptable behavior. After the wedding night, for example, a modest Roman wife should not let her husband see her naked again. What? Uh, that fucking sucks. Consequently, it might be no surprise that uh, those philosophers who argued that a man should not have sex with anyone but his wife, even not even with his slaves, won few converts. Well, yeah. Because that sucks. You're going to have slaves, you're going to fuck them, I mean... You mean also you're not going to see your wife naked? I mean, that kind of Generals sucks. seldom fought in combat. I mean, that's true, to, that's true now, too. Although in art they like to be depicted as heroic and martial posture, Roman generals were battle managers, not warriors. Well, yeah, that's what, the fu- that's what being a general is. Emperors poisoned themselves every day. What, to, like, get immunity? From the end of the 1st century AD, Roman emperors had adopted the daily habit of taking a small amount of every known poison in an attempt to gain immunity. The mixture was known as Mithridatium, uh, after the originator of the practice, Mithridates, uh, the great king of Pontus. That's cool. That'd be a cool, like, metal name or something. Mithridatium. Mithridatium. Ah! Every poison known to man. What is going on? That cat is trying desperately to <laughs> knock the store down. The cat's trying oh. to... He beat Stevie's latch. Shocking. Congratulations. A three-pound cat <laughs> just utterly d- also, <laughs> picked your may lock. May I remind you that Stevie said he was going to fix the latch recently. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> Get right on that as the cat walks right in. I object to the wording of this last one. Romans believe so the they box had good is going reason. back in front of the fucking door. Romans believe they had good reason to process, persecute Christians. Romans did have good reason to persecute Christians. You know they suck. The Romans believe their empire rested on the Pax Deorum. If the Romans did right by the pagan gods, those deeds would do right by them. I mean, whatever. It's the same superstitious nonsense every human being has believed in. If I do right by the gods, the God do right by me. Big fucking deal. The fuck is this shit? It looks like you're using an ad blocker, Stop TJ. It, TJ. Turn you off naughty the ad blocker. Boy. Turn off that ad blocker, you naughty boy. Whatever. Move on. It's fine. 12 really weird facts about World War II. I'm almost done with this segment anyway, so. That's true. You got 20 minutes or so. Oh, we got 20 more minutes? Yeah, we're at, let me see what our time is on this uh, stream here. So far, this one has lasted 5 hours, 37 minutes, 54 seconds. Okay, so it's 23 minutes, that's fine. Oh, plenty of stuff really weird facts about World War II. Did you know it was the Second World War? (laughs) No. Whoa. Mind equals blown. (laughs) Dogs were used in World War II to find where the enemy was hiding. (laughs) Oh, man. I'm shocked by that. Damn, dude. Whoa. Look at that motherfucker. (laughs) All right. That looks like a pretty dope dog, though. Serving his fucking country, dude. Which way did that go, Spot? Right way, Raggy. London, uh, UK didn't pass its World War II population levels until January 2015. Um, so it took them that long to recover the population they had prior to the war. About 50 years. Looks like they're due for another bombing. Damn, Paul. Sorry. Damn. I just don't like the Brits. Why not? What's wrong with them? Everything about them is wrong and backwards. Such as what? Everything that's delicious is bad there. That's true. You know? Like flapjacks. 
Want a flapjack Here, ball? Here, buttery, fluffy, thick, filling there. Crunchy and dry and gross granola bullshit. I mean, like, fuck them. That really is what sold me on it. When I learned about that bullshit, it was all downhill for them. Racist, Paul. It's not Racist, Dad. When is a British ball. a race? <laughs> I don't know. People are calling you racist, whatever. Leslie Bull Allen was an Australian infantry soldier who saved 12 <laughs> United States soldiers. Who gives a flying fuck? <laughs> fuck Leslie Bull Allen and his useless cock sucking ass. But he saved ass. 12 United States soldiers. Wow. He's like the real Forrest Gump. Run, Forrest, run. Something Didious. bit me. In the buttocks. Well, Australians are stupid, so. We can unfortunately thank Hitler for the vol. Why is it unfortunate? I don't need you to editorialize what's unfortunate yeah, for me. Yeah, seriously. So, like, Hitler did a bunch of bad Whatever things. Whatever happened to giving the devil is due, motherfucker. But he also gave us the Beatles. I designed the Beatles. Killed <laughs> six million Jews, gave us the Volkswagen Beetle. It all evens I may, out may I've killed in some the end, Jews, you know? but I gave us a Beetle. What else do you need? I tried to make up for it by making a cute little car. Look at it. It's like a Don't beetle. you like it? It is, has a dome. So your head can fit. Soldiers would put on plays when they had free time. Apparently they're doing a rendition here of like Donnie Darko or something. Yeah. Uh, no, this is actually their performance of Paul's Nightmares after the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'll Hello, be harried Paul. by these horrible masks and people wearing bunny masks dressed up like soldiers Some horrible and shit. clown playing an accordion yeah. while a fucking demon bunny dances around you. Yep. Welcome to Sleep Deprived Paul's Nightmares. Um, You skipped it. I do. Minoru, Minoru Wada was an American citizen who was raised in Japan and provided U.S. bombers with vital intelligence. Damn, dude. He was snitching. Snitch. For the good guys, though. The good people. The Nazis weren't seen as that bad eh, until 1939. They're not so bad. I mean, I knew this. Dude, he was Time's Man of the Year and shit in, like, 1938 or some shit. When this photo of the Hindenburg with a Nazi flag was taken over Manhattan on May 6, 1937, America wasn't at war or even worried about war with Germany. But they should have been worried today, given May 6 was the Hindenburg disaster. Oh, shit, dude. What? Uh, that only makes oh. sense. No, I get it, because this article was released on May 6th. Yeah. Oh, whatever. Who cares? A Polish Catholic housewife, or sorry, midwife, delivered 3,000 babies during the Holocaust. <laughs> oh, oh, good damn, for dude. her. Stanislaw Lesnik <laughs> was held at the Auschwitz concentration camp in occupied Poland where these babies were born. She's so inspiring, but number 12 is even better. Wow, that's w- that's one way to keep me reading, you know? Number fucking 12. I might have given up on this list, but I'm like, ooh, something crazy is coming number, number 12. 12. Number nine through everything else sucks. Why am I looking at these dudes' asses again? Uh, soldiers were given toilet paper rations. Americans oh. had 22.5 sheets of toilet paper a day, and the Brits got three. Ouch. Three? So you had to fight a war and have a shitty asshole? That's, That's no all good. right. We don't like wiping our asses anyway. Americans thought hamburgers sounded too German, so they changed the name. They called them Liberty Steaks. Oh, Oh, my God, and Freedom Fries. Give me a Liberty Steak. Sounds too damn Germany to me. Liberty Steaks and Freedom Fries. Give me a Liberty Steak with a side of Freedom Fries. Dude, Squex wants to be on the show, man. All right. Dude, put on, turn on that camera and sh- let Squex have his moment in the sun. He's desperate, dude, to be in here. He wants it. He wants to be part of the show. You gotta go, bitch. Get the fuck up out of here, Squeckers. You ridiculous. What a fucking cunt. Squex, man. We're getting pretty close to that fucking number twelve. Hitler's nephew served in the U.S. Navy. Oh, shit. William Patrick Hitler. (laughs) Oh, fuck. (laughs) Um, 
Originally moved to Germany from England after his uncle got him a job at the bank, he later sold stories about Chancellor Hitler and tried to join the British forces but was denied. He thinks uh, for his name, who can really blame them? He then convinced President Roosevelt to let him on board. He served as a hospital corpsman until 1947. I'd just change that name at that point. Probably a good idea. This is the amazing number 12. Oh, what the fuck am I looking at here? <laughs> What the fuck it is It looks this? like a dude that robbed a fucking liquor store in Seattle or something. Like, what did he do? I don't know, but I hope it was chin-related. Uh, Sergeant Joseph R. Burl? 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 Burl, I don't know. Is the only American to have served for both... Byerly? Whatever. Both the Americans and the Soviet Union in World War II. Yeah. How's that amazing? I'm amazed by that. Fuck you. Why why, why, why does it look like a mugshot? I don't know. He was arrested at this time. Oh. (laughs) What the fuck am I looking at, man? 14 intriguing things you might not know about the Mongols. The Mongols. Stupid fucking Mongols. Um, a Mongol was trained to ride horses by the age of three. As they should be. Yeah. A, as a child's age crossed the threshold of three years, it was his mother's responsibility to teach him to ride a horse. All right, fair enough. Seems fair to me. Most Mongols had keen sights along with evolved visual memories. Damn. The fuck? Um, the Mongols' keen sight had been attested by various then-contemporary sources with seemingly unbelievable claims. Some of them pertain to how a Mongol can make out an enemy hiding behind the scanty bushes of the wild steppes from a four-mile distance. That's what you call bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, of course they were saying this. Like, this is like, oh, they're trying to, they're building up the enemy force. Like, oh, they're fucking, like, demons and all this. I mean, yeah, this is legend. Dude, l- not... read that next one. All right. While also having the incredible capacity to discern between man and beast from an 18-mile distance. Dude, they couldn't see shit at 18 miles. <laughs> Such apparently exaggerated claims surely had some basis on the strong visual memory exhibited by uh, by a regular Mongol warrior. Well, whatever. Maybe it had some basis. Maybe they, they had better than average vision, but they weren't like hawks or some shit. He could see someone fart on the other side of the <laughs> yeah. globe, you know? <laughs> a Mongol warrior could live without food rations for days. Yeah, anyone can live without food for days. I mean, yeah. I think the I think human beings can live for like two weeks without food on average. Probably even more, honestly, if, if they I have mean, water. Those fucking kids in the cave survive like nine days without it. The Mongols carried two types of arrows into the battle. All right. It's unsurprising that regular Mongol warrior's main weapon of choice was his compound bow, or more accurately, the composite bow, which is capable of delivering a pull of uh, 166 pounds of pressure, I guess. Damn. Had a substantial range of over 250 yards, so that's about 750 feet. Uh, Furthermore, Carpini had claimed that the Mongols carried two types of arrows— with the lighter ones used for long-range firing and the broader, heavier ones used for close-quarter missile attacks. Cool. Badass Sweet. motherfuckers. So they had close-range arrows for up-close work? That's pretty nice. As opposed to our contemporary notions, in most cases, the Mongols were actually outnumbered in battles. Really? They just used better tactics or what? Unbiased studies done in our modern times have shed some new light into the logistical support and mobility of Mongol forces in the 13th century A.D. Intriguingly, it has been established that Mongols were actually outnumbered by their foes in most of their battles. Uh, most of the battles, they emerged victorious. So the question naturally arises, why did the Europeans and other powers perceive the Mongol generals to have astronomical hordes of soldiers supporting them? Well, the answer relates to the evolved tactics of the Mongols in the battlefield. To that end, the nomads were known for their superior mobility and enveloping strategies. 
that allowed them to encircle their enemies from all sides, which fueled the false notion of superior in numbers forces. Dude, on top of all that, they could see the other army coming from 18 miles away. Yeah, so they had a lot of time to prepare. With their naked fucking bare eyes, dude. Uh, they were masters of psychological warfare and spying. That's Damn, pretty cool. Damn, that's cool. I like that shit. Let's see. Uh, that's why there's so many legends about them, though. You know, this psychological warfare shit. Right. Uh, the Mongol High Command made immaculately detailed plans on how to infiltrate the enemy territory and gather firsthand knowledge about their defensive systems, roads, croplands, water supplies, and even grazing lands. Spies were further recruited to plant dissension among the enemy warlords and kings. Propaganda was also used to entice the local population with the Mongols projecting themselves as potential liberators to the poor people. Oh, yeah, dude. We've heard that one before, haven't we? Yeah. Who? Who? What other empires have used that shit? I don't know, dude. I've mm. never... I can't think of any contemporary examples. We're coming to liberate you. It just sounds so familiar, you know? We will be greeted as liberators. I can't put my finger on, on what it is, though. Whatever. There is no word for soldier in Mongol language. Because, like, everybody is a soldier, right? Uh, let's see. There is a definitive reason for that as the entire... Yeah. Yep. That's basically it, yes. Mongol officers were accountable for their troops' preparedness. I mean, like every other officer in the army? Yeah, I mean, like, what army can you be in where, like... The whole like, point if, of having an officer is to make sure that your if, regiments of troops are all fucking ready to go. Yeah, if all the troops are just undisciplined shitheads, I don't think you... And you're their fucking commanding officer. You can't just be like, man, I don't know what to do with them. They're just fucking... They're lazy. They suck. Historians have studied the very... Yeah, whatever. We, you know... Most Mongol shock cavalry forces were required to wear silk be shirts beneath their heavy armor. Why, Why? is that? Because it just looked cool? Uh, the fad of wearing a silk shirt beneath the armor was inculcated out of necessity rather than a style statement. Silk is known to have fibers that can potentially cushion the impact of an arrow. More importantly, it was common medical knowledge that a barbed arrow did more damage when pulled out from the skin rather than when penetrating the skin during impact. The silk fibers came in handy during such injurious scenarios because they twisted along the pierced arrow point, which made the act of pulling the arrows out much safer and cleaner. Wow. Neat. Good they, old They silk. thought of everything, dude. Yeah, they, were, they came fucking prepared. Like, yeah, we're going to take some arrows, but we're wearing silk, so it's all right. Just, just pull it out of there. It'll silk be better. cushion that shit. Silk will cushion that up real good. Get back on your horse, bitch. The Mongols were experts in designing and carrying prefabricated dwellings. Oh, yeah, those yurt things or whatever they yeah, call them. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty neat. Oh, it's in. Oh, sorry. Sorry. It's the gur, often the gur. incorrectly termed as the yurt. Stupid fuck. God damn. I'm such an ignorant, blind piece of God shit. God damn. You're dumb, Paul. Fire Paul. Why are you so fucking stupid? Uh, dumb Paul. fuck Paul opens his mouth again and proves he knows nothing. Every winter, the Mongols called for a great strategic hunt of animals. Oh. All right. I mean, that makes sense. The Mongols were among the last people to successfully invade Russia during the winter. Well, if anyone could fucking do it, it's apparently these badass motherfuckers. They had shit fucking figured out. The Mongols not only dared to invade Russia during the winter season of 1237 and 38 AD, but were also successful in turning the bitter conditions to their advantage these as smart opposed fucks. to Napoleon and Hitler's forces. And while it may seem audacious on their part, the momentous decision made at the uh, Kurultai Kurult, uh, was based on the pillars of practicality. To that end, the frozen rivers and lakes allowed crucial junctures of unbroken communication paths from uh, the mobile bodies of the troops, while the hardy Mongol pony also had remarkable capacity to forage in snow. Quite antithetically, the Mongols planned to invade Iraq in the spring of 1258 AD so as to avoid the onslaught of both heat and malaria. Man, these, was there, was there, did they fight like people in lava too? <laughs> like what were they not prepared for? They had it all locked down, man. The Mongols were lava. Pimps. Just rub yourself in in, in strained peaches. Yeah. You'll be fine. They would rub themselves in the dung of their horses, which would totally insulate their bodies from lava. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, the ordinary Mongol soldiers paid their leaders, not the other way around. Damn, dude. Damn, you had to pay to fucking... Wow. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty crazy. For Europeans, the Mongols came from hell. I can see why. Yeah, they dude. They were just better. <laughs> they're just better than just you. It's like, man, these people must be from You're lucky hell. that their country is small, because like, otherwise... 16 of these dudes showed up and beat our whole army. We better say there was a horde. <laughs> The oh, my Mongols. God. Couldn't, couldn't see the end of the Golden Horde, man. Uh, the Mongols were also known as the Tartars in, to the Europeans, a term which was most probably derived from the word Tartar, tartar which meant Ta-ta. mounted messenger. In both Turkish and Persian language traditions, however, the inclusion of the R in the European case was surely an intentional ploy <gasps> In a bid to invoke the ominous effect of Tartarus, the Greek equivalent to hell. Uh-huh. Actual evidence Sneaky of such language a wordplay comes from the letter. Yeah, okay, so they got evidence. This is like that Democrat shit. Democrat, more what, like it. Well, they, just, the, just Democrat. Just calling somebody like saying the Democrat party. You ever wonder why they do that? The Democrat. It's because it like evokes the word rat. Democrat. Democrat. The Demic Rat Party. The Demonic Rat Party. Yeah, the Demo Rat Party. Ten yeah. truly disgusting facts about ancient Greek life. You can oh, definitely relate wonderful. to this. Oh, man. Mm. Your doctor would taste your earwax. Mm, you seem pretty fine. People wiped themselves with stones. I mean, I don't know. When you pooped? You had I mean, to get clean that toilet paper, you know. You gotta wipe Couldn't with whatever you got. not waste on that you shit. You read a little bit about this. Why'd they do that? Toilet paper didn't make its way to Europe until the 16th century. When did leaves then. make their way to Europe? I mean, come on. That's a good point. Nature's teepee. Why a rock? The three seashells, dude. Oh. Before then, people had to find their own way to clean up. Like the Romans, the Greeks would sometimes clean themselves with a sponge attached to a stick, but not every Greek was so lucky. More often, the Greeks would clean themselves with stones. They kept a uh, pile of pebbles at their laboratories and grated hard stone against the body. Their sounds like a great idea. Apparently, these were hard to come by. The Greeks had a saying to encourage a little frugality in the bathroom. Three stones are enough to. I wonder wow. if this is. This really is Whoa, the three dude. seashells, dude. This has got to be the origin. <laughs> and of And they're it, still dude. doing the same shit. Three sheets of t- TP only. That's enough. Other times, they take broken shards of ceramic pots and scrape themselves uh, clean with that. Uh, what? Okay. It says that uh, particularly vengeful Greeks might etch their enemies' names onto a piece of pottery, shatter it, and then use it to wipe their butt. Older men would trade roosters that. for sex with boys. I'm putting Moppy Puppy's name on a fucking pot, and I'm going to break it and wipe my ass with it for a week. Greek men would take young boys as lovers. The older man would always take the initiative. Usually, he'd present himself before a young, prepubescent boy and offer him a live rooster, a surefire way to win anyone's affection that still works today. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, really? <laughs> the, the farmer goes out, oh. goes out to the young boy across the pasture and like, here's a rooster, hey young boy, boy. Here's a rooster. So you know what that means. Here you go, little boy, a rooster. If you accept, that means we're lovers. If you, hey, oh, you gee. already accepted my cock, so. <clears throat> oh, gee, mister, molest the shit out of me, please. Uh, says here, when he grew a boy, when he grew a beard, the boy became a man. Now it was his turn to pick a boy of his own to keep the whole twisted tradition going. Let's pass it on down, down the line. Athletes sold their sweat. Wow. How have our athletes not jumped on this bandwagon yet? Yeah, how, how have we not purchased fucking Michael Jordan's sweat yet? I mean, the closest thing I can think of is when they tried to convince us that athletes sweat Gatorade and then tried to make us want to drink Gatorade on that basis for some reason. Before competing, Greek athletes would take off all their clothes and cover themselves in oil. That was how they performed, whether they were running or grappling with another man. Greek athletes would do it naked. By the end, they would usually be covered in filth. So afterwards, the athletes scraped all that sweat, filth, and dead skin off their bodies. It would be gross to watch, but a lot worse if your job was to help out. A group of slaves working as gloios collectors would would have to do just that. Uh, blah, blah, blah. What is, what is the part about them selling it? These scrapings would be sold oh, as medicine? Medicinal. So people were eating this shit? 
They would rub it on their skin. They believed that it calmed aches and pains. Oh, all right, cool. Women's illnesses were treated in the filthiest way possible. Stuff a, shove a turd in her pussy. I hope that's not it, dude. <laughs> oh, God. When a, woman ah! ha- when a woman had a disease, the Greeks believed there was no better treatment than disgusting filth. A woman suffering from a discharge, for example, would drink a mix of <laughs> roast mule excrement and wine. What? If she had a miscarriage, they put cow dung <laughs> they on her. Did it. This occurred because of another weird belief that a woman's womb could move around the body. <laughs> I love the love of cow dung. I love the ancient world because how did they come up with this shit? You must be fooled with cow dung. This Kipper. winch hath miscarried. Put a turd in her pussy immediately. <laughs> Get a mule turd and cram it in her cunt immediately. This bitch miscarried. It's like, oh, that'll help. Sneezing was promoted as an effective birth control method. Sneezing, huh? The Greek physician Sorinus taught that birth control was a woman's responsibility. If a woman got pregnant, he felt, it was her own fault. After all, it was a little unreasonable to expect men to do anything to stop that from happening. In reality, if a Greek woman got pregnant, it was probably the man's fault, specifically Sorinus's. He told women that they could just sneeze instead of using contraceptives. After making love, Saranus told women they needed to just squat, sneeze, and rinse, and they wouldn't. Uh, sounds like he was telling them sweet little lies, so they'd be like, <laughs> "You sneeze, you will not get pregnant." All right, so squat <laughs> down. Really, I say it just so. Squat down and sneeze a couple times, and you'll be totally not oh. pregnant. So is that just like for the jism to come flying out? Slaves had to wear chastity belts, I guess. The Greeks, I mean, the Greeks didn't want their slaves wasted time fucking, so they made them wear chastity belts. Cool. Well, I mean, they they had better things to be doing. Uh, they thought lesbians had giant clitorises. <laughs> well, some of them probably did. When it came to women's rights, ancient Greece wasn't exactly the most progressive country. Just quit lying. <laughs> Above all, the Greeks didn't understand lesbians. They couldn't conceive of two people making love without somebody penetrating somebody. Oh. So they basically decided that lesbians must be born with giant clitorises. They referred to the female penis and figured that it was the cause of female homosexuality. Dude, the sheenus? <laughs> Why are the... Wait, man, the Greeks were fucking That's stupid. That's what's going on, dude. <laughs> They the, stuff the a giant turd in a pussy. <laughs> more, here's more turds. They use crocodile dung as skin cream. Dude, what, what, what compels a reasonably enlightened people that are like building homes and shit to grab shit off the ground and rub it on themselves? I don't know. Dude. What has, is this? Paul Knight face has a wrinkle. <laughs> Here, I found sure. a crocodile turd. Rub it on your face. Verily, I know the method to cure such a, a malady, Paul. So right. go to the All swamps right. and, correct, and collect crocodile dung we to are rub gonna- upon your face.